sorry about that. That uh, took way longer than I expected it to take. Uh, <laughs> I was just really... I got really confused about what was happening, really. Like my... Um, what's it called? My Elgato didn't want to function properly, so I was like... Uh? That was really strange. Oh, I forgot to turn on the lights. There we go. Now they're on. It should work now, right? Yes, okay, cool. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, hello. Today we are doing the last case in the first game. Well, if you don't count like the bonus case that comes afterwards or whatever. Uh, which I'm also gonna do next time. <laughs> But yeah, with that, I think I'm just gonna, like, get right into it, because by now- Oh, actually, before that, uh, gotta- gotta do this. Very important. If you want to check out the song. <laughs> it's by Aruka. Here on YouTube, it's called, uh, Jailer's Elegy, Lo-Fi Hip-Hop Remix, Phoenix Wright OST. Anyways, wrong one, uh, this one. <laughs> Sorry. I keep pressing the wrong buttons. I'm not very smart, but that's okay. All right. I think I'm gonna turn this top audio up a tiny bit because I felt it was really low in the last stream. <sighs> okay. God knows it's really loud in my ears, but uh, that's... Here we go. Turn about goodbyes. It's been, what, 15 years? About that, yes. 15 years is a long time to wait. You can't imagine how much I've suffered. You've suffered? But now, the perfect opportunity has presented itself. At last, I shall have my revenge. What? Merry Christmas. Edgeworth? Not me trying to act shocked. <laughs> Ayo, where is it? A anyone, really. My god, we just found out that Edgeworth shot a man. And it's really dramatic. <laughs> you know, I should really do this like beforehand. But I always forget to do it. I also feel like I've forgotten something. But I can't really think of what that might be. <laughs> um, let me just check some things. Uh, Uh, do, 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 do. I should have posted uh yeah okay I did <laughs> I really call this Edgeworth's childhood trauma huh <laughs> I didn't really know what to like call it I feel like that's kind of like I don't know a decent thing to call it also I feel like my face looks really weird is that just me maybe it's just me I don't know maybe my face cam just looks really dark for these streams. I don't know. Yeah, I look really dark and red. For some reason, on my phone, like, on my monitor, I don't look as bad. If I turn up the brightness of this a bit, maybe? And... Uh, how's this? 
I'm looking at my <laughs> phone now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that looks way better. Okay, cool. <laughs> So, yeah. Okay, you know what? I'm uh, switching over to wrong thing over here, because why not? Uh, just while I wait, I might just start over again, actually, once I, like, get more people in here or whatever. <sighs> oh, I can't even type. Hmm. Let me bother some people on Twitter, I guess. Join my stream, please. <laughs> oh, also, I probably should uh, message my own Discord server, right? I keep I keep forgetting it. I have that. <laughs> oh, wait. Let me turn on music again. It was really boring, I guess. But I, I'm gonna start over. But uh, I am uh, just. Oh, I can just do this. Perfect. It's been, what, 15 years? About that, yeah. 15 years is a long time to wait. I can't imagine how much I've suffered. You've suffered? But now, the perfect opportunity has presented itself. At last, I shall have my revenge. What? Merry Christmas. It's February. It's worth. What are you doing, boo? What are you doing? No. All right. December 25th. Riding call offices. Let's go. Hey, hey, Nick. Do you know if there are any good waterfalls around here? Waterfalls? Dare I ask why? Duh, Nick. Isn't it obvious? I need a waterfall to stand under, preferably a freezing one. Oh, uh, is that part of your spirit medium training? Of course! Except, I've been slacking off lately. I need to brave the elements and be forged anew under the rushing spring waters. Um, 
Okay. Hi, Lila. Thank you for dropping by. I really appreciate that. Okay. I don't know about any falls per se, but Gord Lake is pretty close. Oh, um, darn. Sorry, them's the breaks. Is the is the audio okay, by the way? Like the desktop audio and my mic. I just felt it was like really low last time, so I figured I might as well just fix it, you know. But I can make uh, the desktop audio a bit lower. I don't know. Wait, let me check uh, here. You're a bit low. Game music a bit high. What about now? I fixed it a bit. I can also turn up my own mic a bit. I just like don't want to like overdo it. I don't know. Cause I feel I feel like it was really low last time. I like listened to it and I was like, oh my god, I can I can barely like hear the music. <laughs> I feel like it should be fine now though. I'm like a tiny bit higher than the desktop audio as I can see it. Couldn't you just take a cold shower or something? Good idea! So much for rushing spring waters. Next in the news, a large unidentified animal was sighted at Gord Lake. The town is buzzing with excitement. Locals are calling it, calling it Gordy in a tip of the hat to Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster. Though its namesake, Nessie proved to be a hoax. Locals are confident their Gordy is a real deal. Ah, <sighs> boring. Can't they show real news for a change? It's a little bit too loud music from the game. Okay. This is how I had it last time. Maybe I can turn up my own mic again. Is this better? Nick? Huh? The water pressure is kind of low in that shower. You want more pressure, huh? Why don't you go down to the fire department and have them spray you with a hose? Good idea, Nick! Yeah, okay, cool! Cool, cool, cool. Apparently, fade blood is no aid in detecti te detecting sarcasm. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. Strange occurrences continue at Gord Lake, but this time it's murder. Hold on, wait. I have my uh, face cam is a bit. Uh, that's a bit better. Gord Lake again? The body of a man was found in the lake early this morning. A suspect was apprehended. Sources inside the police department revealed that the suspect's name is Miles Edgeworth, age 24. Edgeworth was an up-and-coming prosecutor known for his skill and connections. He was guaranteed a long and rewarding career. Has he thrown it all away? Huh? E Edgeworth? What's going on? Edgeworth would never do something like... Nick? Yipes! Maya! The fireman yelled at me when I called him. You've got bigger things to worry about than that. They arrested Edgeworth! What? You mean the prosecutor? Yeah, he's a suspect. In a murder. What? When? Where? Whom? Why? How? Actually, let me turn up. No, not that. Turn up the sound effects a bit because I'll like them a bit higher. I, I, I don't know. Let's go find out, Nick. All right. L let's go to, uh... Detention center. I want to talk to Edgeworth. You know, Nick, we've all been in here one time or another, haven't we? I guess it comes with the territory. I'm not sure it's something we should mention to too many people. Oh, no, no, wait. That, sorry. <laughs> ah! 
Hey, Edgeworth, come back! What are you doing here? Nick, I don't think he's in a very good mood. Well, he is in detention. Were you in a good mood when you were here? So you've come to laugh at the fallen attorney. Then laugh. Laugh! Well, why aren't you laughing? Nick, should we be laughing? Nah, it's a trick. Laugh and he'll get mad, or burst into tears. Edgeworth. We don't have so much free time, we can spend it coming down here to laugh at you. Yes, you do. Actually, he's right. I hoped you wouldn't come. I didn't want you to see me. Not like this. I didn't want to see you like this either. Believe me. So, what happened? Edgeworth, tell me what happened. Why should I? What are you going to do about it? Duh! We're going to help you, that's what! <laughs> help me? You? Don't be ridiculous. Sorry? You're a novice. You've only been in three trials. H hey! Sure, you got lucky and won all three. But your luck's bound to run out someday. You need real skill, right? Experience. Nick! He's insulting you! Nick! Why am I always the one who has to get angry? Tell us about Gord Lake. The murder took place at Gord Lake, correct? Yes. Late last night. The lake is a long way away from your offices and the courthouse. Why were you down there? I see no need to tell you. M Mr. Edgeworth? You... you didn't really... Gordy. Huh? I went to see Gordy. Gordy? What's that? I'll uh, tell you later. I want Edgeworth to talk to us. Listen, I have an attorney's badge. I will, de I will defend you. <laughs> Your attorney's badge, Edgeworth. Let me defend you. <laughs> Good one, right? But I'm not that hard up, not yet. What do you mean by that? Me? Trust a wet behind the ears lawyer with only three trials under his belt? Never. What? My case is near hopeless, right? Every, every defense attorney I've talked to has turned me down. What? Simply put, they were afraid they'd lose. It occurred to me that it might be my fault that they lack confidence. After all, I did get every single one of their clients declared guilty. I don't believe it. Regardless, I don't want you involved in this. You in particular, I cannot ask to do this. Edgeworth. This is really hard for me to ask, but you didn't do it, right? Right? Think what you will. I have only one request. Huh? Stay out of this case. Why? But, but Nick is trying to help you! I know. I know that. But I don't want your help, okay? Why not? Look, just go away and leave me alone. Nick! Mr. Edgeworth did it, didn't he? Maya, let's go investigate elsewhere. But, Nick! Come on, wait, let me just turn it down a bit more. Down to 45, so probably. <laughs> okay, let's go to Gord Lake. The entrance. This is where it happened? Yeah, Gord Lake is in the middle of this park. I can see some police walking around in there. Questioning people, probably. Hey, isn't that Detective Gumshoe over there? Well, pal. There's enough of us here. Anyone found anything? S sorry, sir. Nothing. You're really good with the voices. <laughs> I sometimes actually think it's in the game. Really? Thank you so much. 
Idiot, the trail's tomorrow. We need clues on the double. B but sir, there weren't any clues. That's why we arrested that attorney, Mr. Edgeworth. It's clear, sir. He's the one who's- Shut up! Just you try saying that again. I'll- I'll- I'll make you sorry if you do. So just- Just get out of my face, pal. Y yes sir. Detective Gumshoe is kind of scary today. Recruits. <laughs> ah! Eh. Hey, you're the hairy guy, Harry Butts. Right, Phoenix Wright. Will he ever learn my name? And just what are you doing here, pal? Investigating? Huh? Um. Well, yes, I suppose. Well, I'm here to help. Ask me anything you want. Bring it. He seems different than usual. I wonder what's up. Um, Mr. Edgeworth hasn't actually asked us to defend him yet. Huh? Oh, y you don't say. All right, what happened? Detective Gumshoe? Do you know what happened here? Huh? You don't know, pal? No. Well, okay, Mr. Head in the Fluffy Pink Clouds lawyer. Head in the, huh? Never mind, I'll tell you. It happened last night, about 15 minutes after midnight. There was a boat out on Gord Lake. In that boat were two men. One of those... Pardon me. I had to go to B? I didn't hear you. Wait, is my is my uh, no my I think my audio should be fine. I just thank you for your praise, <laughs> really, for my voices. I try my best. One of those men shot the other with a pistol. And the shooter was Mr. Edgeworth. A cop who arrived on the scene arrested him. How did they get there so fast? Well, it was a witness. When the report came in, we raced to the lake. A witness? Tell me about this witness. Who was this witness? Uh, sorry pal, that's confidential. Anyway, the witness saw everything apparently. I'm sure they'll turn up at the trial tomorrow. Was there only that one witness? Yep, it was pretty cold out on the lake last night. And it was Christmas Eve, after all. Still, we're being thorough. You never know when you're going to turn up another witness. That's why we're here today, checking things out. So far, we're coming up empty. Oh, it's Christmas today! I'd forgotten! What are you getting me for Christmas, Nick? Talk to Santa. You don't think Mr. Edgeworth is a uh, murderer, do you? Absolutely not, it's impossible. I don't care if there's a witness either. I don't ha I don't believe a lick of it. If you reply to my message. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yes, 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 I just I just said thank you for the praise, really. <laughs> right. Who cares what the witness says? I care. You really believe in him, don't you, de de don't you, detective? Of course I do. But the police are pretty sure it's the killer. Nobody's ever even really ta taking this investigation that seriously. Oh no! After all the help Mr. Edgeworth has been to us, hard to imagine that no one's standing up to take his side. Well, at least you are, detective. At least you are. Is it true? No one will take Mr. Edgeworth's case? Yeah. He's a bit of a celebrity. If you defended him and lost, your rep your reputation be sure to suffer. Once more, the case against him is... Well, it's pretty solid. I suppose it would be if they have a witness. Hey, pal. Don't tell me you're going to turn your back on him, too. Remember the Steel Samurai case? 
Mr. Edgeworth, help you get your client declared innocent. I... I know. I went to Edgeworth. I tried. He really doesn't want us to represent him. Especially not us, he said. What? Well, that doesn't make any sense, pal. You should have heard him talking about you after that trial. Okay. You kept saying, right, 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 over and over. Okay. Uh, Nick? I'm not sure that's a good sign. Neither am I. Why wouldn't he want your help? I don't get it. Detective Gumshoe, sir. What? Find something? Um, no, sir, not yet. But there was a call from the precinct. They want to hold an investigation briefing. A briefing? Right, I'm off. Oh, sorry, pal. I guess you heard. I gotta go. Any last things you want to ask me before I head back? The autopsy report. Well, yes. Do you have any information on the victim? Sorry. They haven't worked up the autopsy report yet. I'm still waiting for it myself. Actually, say if you get the time, drop by the precinct. We can talk more there, pal. You're not coming back, detective? Um, probably not, pal. So what should we do if we have something to talk to you about? Ah, right. Here, I'll show you how to get to the precinct. Come down and see me anytime. Yes, thank you for the police station directions. Oh, hey, Detective Gumshoe. What? Um, we'd like to take a look around the park. Can we walk around? Yeah, no problem, pal. You got my permission. You know, Nick, I think there's something to be said for talking to people when they're busy. Yeah, they don't have time to think about not giving you information. Right. Now, let's get investigating. All right. Let's go to the beach. Public beach. Well, sirs, this is Gord Lake. Yep. I'm not sure it warrants a wowzers, though. Hmm, probably not. But hey, look at that snack stand. Samurai dogs? I want a samurai dog, please. I bet they're great. With a name like Samurai Dog, how could they not be? They're a little behind the times, though. The kids are all into the pink princess now. Oh, oh, oh throw back to... Oh, I gotta go. Yeah. Thank you for dropping by for a little while. I will enjoy this. I will be sitting here for hours and hours and hours. Though, to be fair, I will be sitting here longer at the end of the next two games. Because... The cases last for like over nine hours, both of them. <laughs> so I'm like, should I like sit here for like, I don't know why I'm like thinking about this now because they're, I have to get through like one, two, three, four, at least like three or four <laughs> streams before I get to that point, like more, but I'm just like really like worried about it. I'm just like, oh my god, it's gonna like kill my voice <laughs> for like a whole week or something. I don't know. But like, then again, I've had like 10 hour streams before, so it's probably doable. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just take it as I, I, I get there, I guess. <laughs> I mean, like, you know? Nope. <laughs> all right, what do we got around here? What's uh, this all about? Huh, someone left some poppers here, you know. You know, you pull the string and it goes pop. Yeah, I know the ones. You see them a lot around New Year's. Hey, Nick, they might be a clue. Let's take them. Come on and admit it. You just want to pop them, right? Was it that obvious? Poppers, hmm. Yeah, I'll take them. Drink tea? I don't have tea. <laughs> I suppose it couldn't hurt. Huh? Where'd they go? Into my pocket. Okay, cool. Hot dog stand. It's closed. The Christmas fringe looks a little half-baked. The banner reads, Samurai Dogs. Somebody needs to redecorate. redecorate. 
anything in the trash can? I mean, it looks empty, but uh, the trash can is empty. Cool. At least the place is well maintained. Okay. Uh, let's go to the boat rental shop. See you. You have a wonderful night. <laughs> Nick, what is this place? A boat rental shop. Close for Christmas, it seems. I guess a murder taking place on one of the boats won't be good for business either. Boats? I've never ridden on a boat. Really? Well, how about we go out on one when the trial is finished? Hey, good idea! You bet! Mm, a small boat rental shop. Doesn't look like anyone is around. They're probably closed because it's Christmas. What about the boats? There are some boats floating at the dock. Was one of these boats used in the murder, I wonder? Nick? Huh? I changed my mind. I don't really want to go for a boat ride. Oh. Alright, back to... <laughs> to the woods we go. Hmm. I like it here, Nick. Look! Someone's camping! I got guts. Camping at the scene of a murder. Also, it says no camping in the back. <laughs> hey! Hey, Nick! If they were camping here last night, they might know something about the murder. That's true. Good call, Maya. Let's go talk to them. Um... Car? This SUV has seen better days. It's dented all over. It looks fine to me! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like that 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 car seems fine, right? Like I'm not the only one that thinks that car seems fine. Like I can't really see any dents on it. I can't believe anyone would drive their ca car down here. Um there's food and some magazines on the sheets. It takes a pretty tough skin to camp in this cold. The sign says no camping. Funny place to pick to pitch your tent. Wait, what if the sign said said no setting tents on fire? I don't think they have signs like that. Oh. Okay. Hey Nick, but don't tell me you're hungry again. No, no. I was just wondering why are camping pots and pans made of aluminum? They didn't talk about that in any of the law books. So there's no law saying they have to be made out of the out of aluminum then. I guess it's because it's like a very light metal or something, right? It's very lightweight, so it's like easy to carry around. I'm not having this conversation. <laughs> I believe it's something like that anyways. Mm. Okay, what about this camera? This camera has a mic and some sort of attachment. It must take pictures when triggered by a noise. Well, cool, let's try it out. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Nick! Maybe I'm not saying it loud enough. Hey, I'm Nick! Huh. Nick! Will you stop that? Maybe it's broken. Don't kick it. Maybe it isn't set to respond to voices. Well, what then? These things? The party poppers? Well, it responded. Yeah! Hey, you! Get your hands off of that! Ah! What in what in the Sam Hill? Look what you done now! There goes a whole roll roll of film. Uh, what? Well, uh, sorry. Sorry is nice, but it don't pay my bills. You don't know how much a roll of that film costs. I I'll pay you back. What were you all thinking, setting off a party popper in, in a place like this? Uh, well... What? Don't try to play stupid with me just cause you think I'm some country bumpkin. Yeah, I know how you all yanks think. I say those southern folks talk with that exaggerated drawl why they must be dumb. Well, let me tell you, just because I might be dumb don't mean we all are. Nick, help. And who are you now? Her chaperone? Yeah, uh, no, rather, uh, we're sort of, uh, friends? 
Just figure out what y'all are gonna say and say it for Bajism's sake. Oh my god. Uh, I've, I've been dreading this moment. <laughs> I've been dreading this moment. God, I'd rather sit through one of Papa's draws than listen to you stutter all day. Oh boy. I guess we should pay her for the film. Watch it. Yes, ma'am. On second thought, I'll pay later. I'm really sorry. Um... What? Can't you see I'm changing the film on my camera here? Someone, I'm not naming any names, but someone used up a whole roll. Sorry. That didn't work. I wonder if I have anything to show her that would get her attention. Um... I, uh, this is my badge. Huh? Aren't badges supposed to be all shiny and impressive? You a cop or something? Um, I'm a lawyer. What? Y'all ain't gonna try and pull one of them lawsuits on me over that film now. Cause I'll have y'all know I'm a fighter and a rascal meaner looking things than you. My god, I'm struggling! <laughs> no, that's not it at all. We're here investigating a murder that took place here on the lake. A murder? Sounds cool. Why didn't y'all say- Why didn't y'all say that in the first place? Go ahead, ask me anything you like. Finally, some cooperation. You too. Y'all can come out of hiding now, I won't bite. Hard. Come to think of it, where did Maya get to? S sorry I was feeling a little overwhelmed. The culture gap and all. Hold it. Never you mind, honey. I can talk yank for you if you if <clears throat> it pleases you. Thanks. I think I'll be okay. Great then. I'm Lotta, Lotta Hart, but y'all can call me Lotta. I'm here phot photographing meteor showers for a research project. Mighty pleased to meet you. <laughs> oh yeah, when was that murder anyway? I ain't seen much television lately. It happened late in the night on Christmas Eve. That's so, Christmas Eve. A man on a boat was shot. Did you see anything? Well, let me see. A boat, you say? I reckon I might have seen one. Not sure, though. You all gotta remember, I've been watching this here lake for a good three days now. Pretty sure I'm cursed with shitty wife. Oh no, I'm, s I'm so sorry, Bengi. Thank you for making it. I really appreciate it. I seen enough boats to choke him, y'all. Kinda hard to remember which I seen when. Oh my god, I'm struggling here. So, what is it you do, Lotta? Huh? Me? <laughs> y'all don't really want to know that, do you? Actually, I'm a research student at Country U, right in the heart of the heartland. Wow, neat. Nick, she's a research student at a university, Country U. Uh, so we here. So, when did you come up here? Hmm, let me see. I guess it was about three days ago. What are you photographing? Didn't I tell you all that already? Meteors, yep, meteor showers. Falling stars? Okay, what the camera? That's quite a camera you have there. You will better know it. It's German made, a genuine, genuine Solingen. Isn't that where they make knives? Um, so what's the device you have stuck to the camera? Huh? Device? Your camera went off all by itself when I fired my party popper. Oh, that? That mic triggers the shutters uh, whenever it detects certain sounds. It's programmed to pick up loud noises right now. A programmable camera? Neat! Um... I don't think there's anything else here. Here, her hair. At least not right now. Uh, what about the boat rental shop? Nothing here yet. Back here, not examine. I meant to, I meant I meant to go to the entrance, and I meant to go to criminal of your apartment. There we go. Looks like the 
Detective Gumshoe isn't here. Something wrong, miss? Hmm, turning yourself in? Okay, what you do? Shoplifting? Larceny? Public indecency? No, none of those things. We're looking for Detective Gumshoe. Is he around? Gumshoe? Oh yeah, he's in a meeting right now. I don't think he'll be out anytime soon. Okay, we'll come back. You do that. Oh, and go straight home and stay out of trouble. No more shoplifting, you got that? Do I look like a criminal or something? I guess there's nothing here. No. I mean... What about Edgeworth? Edgeworth just said, Peace, bitch, I'm out of here. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. Okay, I, I guess I have to, like, just continue talking to Lotta, right? Okay, what about the camera? Lotta? Yeah? So, your camera, it triggers on loud explosion noises? Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. Actually, the victim in the case we're researching, he was shot with a pistol. A pistol? Right. Now, wouldn't a gun gunshot make a similar noise to our party popper? I guess it would. Your camera didn't get a picture of the murder, did it? Hey! Y'all are pretty bright! Huh? I see what you're saying. Tell you what, I'll have a look-see at my film. It would have been a photo taken late last night. I checked them once, didn't remember if there was anything on them though. But what if I got something? I could be witness to a genuine murder, yeehaw! I'll go check that film, y'all come back now, you hear? Okay, that's what I had to do. Sorry, I'm dumb. She went inside her SUV. I guess we should come back later. Okay, I guess we'll come back later. Huh. <laughs> Nothing at the ball rental shop. Nothing at the public beach. Nothing at the Gord Lake entrance. Then we're going to the criminal affairs department again. <laughs> I guess Detective Gumshoe is still in that meeting. Hey! Thanks for coming down, pal! Detective Gumshoe! We just finished the meeting, for better or for worse. I get the feeling we're in for some bad news. Do you know anything about the victim yet? No, no, still can't ID him. Has Mr. Edgeworth said anything? Not a word. So, uh, how did the meeting go? Can't tell you, pal. You're a lawyer. True. You know, I don't know what to believe anymore. Sure, Mr. Edgeworth's human like you or me. Still, I get the feeling that if he'd done something wrong, he wouldn't go hiding it. That's just the kind of guy he is. Why can't anyone else see that? So they think that Mr. Edgeworth did it? Well, the trial starting tomorrow was scheduled. I see. Um, uh, hey, in the end, you did tell us about the meeting. Don't go telling anyone else, pal. Yes, sir. And do me a favor. Stand by Mr. Edgeworth. He needs help, and you're the ones to help him. I'm sure he's got some reason why he won't talk to us. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. Detective Gumshoe? How come you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? Well, I think that was obvious. We got a strong working relationship, us two. We trust each other, and that's how it works. A working relationship? See, Mr. Edgeworth always gets his defendants declared guilty every time. Yeah, his methods might be a little extreme at times. But there's a reason. He trusts our investigation, see? He trusts us to get the right man. That's why I work extra hard, pal. We got to earn that trust he places in us. I see. Mr. Edgeworth is a man you can trust. And you have my word on that. What about the autopsy report? I was wondering, did you ever get that autopsy report? Oh, that? Yeah, I made a copy for you. Thank you, okay, town death, sometimes on the 24th or 25th. Cause one bullet shot to the heart. Alright, cool. Thank you. Nick? 
Huh? Can you show me that photo of the victim? That face. Someone you know? I... I don't know. I just have this feeling that I met him somewhere a long time ago. God damn it, Maya. You couldn't just, like, identify him for us? Edgeworth! Come out of hiding, you pussy! My god! Actually, do I, uh... Can I show you something? Lana's camera? Drawing a blank. Okay, whatever. And you don't have anything else here. Do I gotta go to... Where exactly? Gord Lake? Again? Hey, y'all! Lotta! That was a weird way to say that, Lily. Lotta! Wait up a sec, we got bingo! Bingo? My automatic camera took two pictures last night. Hey! This is them. Take a look. <laughs> oh wow, this is this is peak photography right here. <laughs> Why do they look so phallic? <laughs> like I, I I know like it, it's it, it's a pretty long distance or whatever, but like they look strangely phallic. I'm not gonna like try and sugarcoat it. They look phallic. Wait. See? See, he's shooting him with that pistol. It, it looks like that, yes. But you can't really tell who that is shooting. Yeah, well, there was enough fog out there last night to strangle a bullfrog. But, you know, seeing these photos reminded me of something. What? I saw the murder happen. I'm a witness. What? Are you serious? Of course. How do you forget? Never mind. You don't reckon I should tell the cops? I reckon so. What's that? Now don't you go trying to mock my accent. I'm a sensitive lady. Hey, so I'm off to talk to the cops. Y'all can have this photo. Later. Wait, Lotta! What? Can't y'all see I'm kinda busy? Tell us what you saw too, please. Nice try, honey, but I wasn't born yesterday. I'm a witness and that means I'm on the side of justice and that means the cops. I'd sooner read the south side of the northbound skunk than tell you. Lotta... Don't let it get your skivvies in a... Don't let it get your skivvies in a bunch. Friends today, enemies tomorrow. Or was that the other way around? No matter. I'm gone. Hey, maybe they'll let me do some testifying. Hot darn! Oh god, she talks so fast and I struggle with her accent because I don't normally speak like that. So it's just like, ah! I feel like I'm doing a decent job though. Like, not to horn my own toot or anything, but like, I feel like I'm doing a decent job at it. She left. Well, that's one more witness. What do we do now, Nick? Well, if she saw something, there's not much we can do about it. The question is, what exactly did she see? I guess we'll find out. In the trial tomorrow. I want I really want to, like, look into the- To the- To the- the, 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 the Look into the camera be like, in the next episode. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> okay, cool. 12.15. Nice. Now! Looks like the police have given up their interviewing. Hey! Ah! Nick! I think Santa's mad at you! A long time no see, Nick. Nick? You know Santa? Wow, Nick and Saint Nick. Hey, I see the connection! Don't be ridiculous. Dude! It's me! Larry? What are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I'm, I'm, I don't remember the voice I gave him. I'm working my day job. 
I sell samurai dogs. Want one? I I I, I can get it when he cries. <laughs> oh, I know I know his voice when when he cries. Gotta get money for dates, you know. My girl Kianse deserves the best. Kianse? Not another model, I hope. Well, Kianse is a fine, fine woman, Nick. It was her idea that I wear this costume. She was all, you go, girlfriend, you know? She bought this costume for me. That... That's great, Larry. Wow, a Santa costume. She must be really nice. Whoa, cute. Nick, who's she? She's not your... Bro, bro, she's 17. Can you not? Can we not? Can we not do this, please? Larry. Larry, please. <laughs> not my... What? No, no, she's not. I'm his partner, Maya Faye. I'm uh, the little sister. Sister? Wow, Nick must be tough. Working nine to five, having to take care of a little sister. No, I'm not Nick's sister. I'm my older sister's little, little sister. Huh? Sounds great. Don't worry, Maya. He's not listening. God, oh, I don't want to talk to Larry. Hey, Larry. There was a murder here last night. And since you work here, God, I feel like I'm just like making all of the voices southern now because of Lada. Lada, you destroyed me. <laughs> and since you work here, have you heard anything? Nick, you're wasting your time. Last night was Christmas Eve. He was with Kianse, obviously. He wouldn't have been standing out here in the cold. Ah, he totally was. I think what you just said caught him off guard, Maya. No, it's just... Kiyotsa's not in town right now. She, uh, she's in Hawaii on a photo shoot. A model. I knew it. Well, anyway, there was a murder here on the lake. The trial's tomorrow. Huh, neat. The defendant is Edgeworth. Miles Edgeworth. Um, Nick? Why would Larry know Edgeworth? Whoa, Nick! You don't mean that, Miles Edgeworth. Old Edgy? Yeah. He's a murder suspect. Whoa, murder? Uh huh, you know Mr. Edgeworth, Larry? Yeah, of course. Edgy was in the same class as us in grade school. What? Let's talk about Edgeworth. So, Mr. Edgeworth was your classmate, Larry. Yeah, Nick, him, and I used to hang out all the time. Wow, I never knew. Don't get me wrong, he's always been kind of a stick in the mud. Studying all the time, trying to be like father. Like his father? Yeah, and just Pop was a famous defense lawyer back in the day. Wow, wait, you said defense lawyer? Yeah! Wait a second. But Mr. Edgeworth is a prosecuting attorney. What? <laughs> he's got a proboscis on his knee. Oh my god. No, no, he's a prosecuting attorney. That's like the total opposite of a defense lawyer. Huh, go figure. He's always He always used to talk about defending the weak who were unable to defend themselves. And he used to go on and on about man's duty to society and all that. What a bore. I wonder what changed his mind, though. Do you know Nick? Nick? Um, um, tell me about the dogs. Huh? Oh, you mean the samurai dogs? Why are they samurai dogs? I, I mean, they kind of look gourd-shaped. Oh, well, originally they were gourd dogs. Like, you know, like guard dogs. Ouch. The samurai thing was Kianse's idea. Oh, she's my woman, you know. She was all, change the name and you go, girlfriend. She made me that banner. Man, the kids can't get enough of those samurai dogs. Um, something about that just seems wrong. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> oh, and guess what? We're getting a ton of customers here at the lake. What with the big news? The big news? Yeah, Gordy. Gordy? Um, 
What's Squirty? Huh? You mean you don't know? It's here in this very lake, a giant mysterious monster, Gordy. A monster? Yeah. Check it out. This is an article from yesterday's newspaper. There's a photo. Wow, it's r really real. Nick, a monster, a real monster. Um, yeah, it's probably just a log or something, right? Hey, there's a quote here from, from the person who took the photo. Hmm, what's this? I set the camera to automatic, and when we got into the frame, I heard a loud bang, like, like an explosion, followed by the sound of something slipping into the water. I wish I could have seen it. Why would there be a sound like an explosion? Larry, could I borrow this article from you? Sure, no problem. That'll be one million dollars. One million? Grow up, Larry. Can I talk to Lara again? Nope, Lara is nowhere to be seen. Love that. Edgeworth, please talk to us. Fuck! Not a gumshoe in sight. If you're looking for Detective Gumshoe, he's in, in the questioning room. Apparently an important witness turned up. Oh, it's Slada. He'll be in there a while. A lot of heart. It has to be. Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh is right. Alright, let's uh, go to the... Back to Larry, maybe? Sorry, Nick. I don't know much about that. I'm just a simple vendor of samurai dogs, dig? Okay, cool. Whatever. What about the bolt rentals? Nope! Nothing here either. Okay, let me dig around here if there's anything more. Okay. There's more forest off that way. I gotta find any helpful clues in there. Okay, cool. Nothing there. Benches! Let's take a break. Maybe have a dog? I think not. It's too cold to sit and eat hot dogs out here. Wimpy city boy. You should try standing under a freezing waterfall sometime. Okay, we get it. We get it, my hero badass. Huh. I almost didn't see that signpost. Left, both dogs. Right, exit. Wow, Gord Lake is really big. Yeah. Say, Nick, why is it called Gourd Lake? Oh, well, a long time ago they used to grow gourds here. Whoa, no way! I was sure it was because the lake looked like a gourd when viewed from above. You know, like an hourglass shape. Well, it is shaped like a gourd, actually, but that's just a coincidence. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Can't get over the samurai dogs. The original samurai dogs, no less. Hey man, whoever calls their product their original first wins. Why don't you add world famous to the sign? Hey, good idea! What have I done? <laughs> oh no. I don't think there's anything else here, right? Because I already checked the trash. And I'm pretty sure that Mr. Larry here doesn't give me any other options. Can we examine an expensive looking camera faces the lake? Next to it is a large microphone and a blue plastic sheet. Looks like a computer is attached to the camera. Interesting. Anything here we can uh, examine? The trees grow quite thick here. Further back, the trees fade into the shadow where the sunlight can't reach them. Have I, um. I don't think I can actually, like, check anything. No, I can't forget. It's this game. <laughs> I'm so used to being able to like open the things and like looking around in them and stuff. I guess I can't do that in the first game, so whatever. 
Where in the hell am I supposed to go? I've been everywhere! I mean, I guess... I don't think there's anything here I can like, look at or whatever. I feel winter's chill from the bare leaf trees today. <sighs> what is it about winter that turn pe turns people into poets? I don't know, but my toes are starting to feel numb. Yes, my poetry has that effect on some people. Science says Gord Lake Nature Park. This place is full of families picnicking on the weekend. But no waterfall. Not many picnickers come here for spiritual training, Maya. I mean, that's fair, I guess. So, okay, that's just the same. Wait, I remember. I remember. There's something over here. Right, I have to, like, speak to this guy or something. This must be the chief of the detectives here. He was glued to his computer screen. What? Gord Lake? Gordy sighted? I don't believe it. Shouldn't you be reading something more important? What about this guy? Hey, is that the police department's mascot? That's the blue badger. It was my idea, I made it. It's my mascot. I see, how nice. I'll get him assigned mascot of the criminal affairs department. If it's the last thing I do. Um, good luck. There's something over here, I remember. So the detective's desks. There are computers and files on each one, funny. They're a lot tidier than I'd expect. I guess the detectives don't spend a lot of time with their desks. Okay, it's just the same thing. What about you? That must be one of the detectives. He's mumbling something to... Pardon me? Himself. Move in the crowd. Wear drab clothes. Never enter the target's field of vision. He must be doing image training for trailing. Interesting. What about this? Poster of a female police officer. Wait, no, that's the latest babes in uniform calendar. My bad. <laughs> Why do you know that, Phoenix? <laughs> Phoenix, you, you have, you have some explaining to do. Do I want to know how you know that? to the offices, I guess. What is it? Oh! Nothing, just something's been bothering me. Could you show me that autopsy report once more? Hey, I, I remember now! This guy! He's a lawyer that was at that office Mia worked at. I met him once when I went there to hang out with this. That office? Wait, you mean Grossberg's office? Right! That guy! That was the last name I expected to come up Maybe I should go talk to him. For old time's sake. Okay, cool. We're progressing. He still hasn't gotten his- How has he still not gotten his painting back? I mean, we caught... Red White, right? We, ca we caught Mr. White. So, technically, shouldn't like he get his painting back? Ahem! Ah, that old familiar clearing of the throat. Aha, uh -huh, you're Mia's something, are you not? I was her understudy, yes. Phoenix Wright. Aha, uh -huh, and you, you're Mia's something too, are you not? Her little sister, yes. You've grown. You've come to look a lot like your sister, you know. It takes me back. Oh, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Um, Mr. Grossberg, sir? Hmm? Ah, oh, yes, I beg your pardon. Of course you came here to discuss something. What is it then? Something the matter? There was a murder last night. A murder? You haven't heard? I uh, just got up, you see. Well, Miles Edgeworth shot someone with a pistol. Edgeworth? What? Who did he shoot? Well, the identity of the victim is still unknown. This is terrible news indeed. I guess he hadn't heard anything. The painting? Mr. Grossberg, whatever happened to that painting? 
Oh yes. I do not think it shall ever be coming back home to this office. I can't exactly claim it as stolen. I suppose it's my just desserts. Old bitter desserts. No, that's sad. I'm sorry, dude. You deserve to get your painting back. <laughs> okay, let me show you the autopsy report. Hmm, strange. I feel as though I've seen this man somewhere before. Oh! Did you remember? He was a lawyer here in my office. That's Hammond. Robert Hammond. Mr. Hammond? And you say this is the man Miles Edgeworth shot? Tell me about Mr. Hammond. Who is this Hammond guy anyway? Mr. Hammond. He was the defense attorney in that case. That case? Or in that- oh, sorry. In that case. Yes, the DL6 incident. We also got like a brief mention of this. Uh, back in the Mia case when we went to this- When we went to this office prior and we uh, found like some uh, images on the desk. I remember that. DL6? Why does that sound so familiar? Perhaps you remember. I'm sure someone mentioned it during the trial for Mia's murder. That was the incident where the police were so at a loss they used a spirit medium. Wait, you don't mean... Was that medium my mother? Yes, my dear. The spirit medium Misty Fay, your mother, contacted the spirit of the victim. But the case was a loss. No conviction was made. The DL6 incident, yes. Happened 15 years ago. A very strange case indeed. They never they never caught the criminal, right? Correct. Misty Fay used her powers to talk to the spirit of the late victim. Her testimony led to the char led to charges being laid against one man, but Mr. Hammond won the case, and the suspect was declared innocent. And the police blamed my mother, calling her a fraud. You were the one who helped her out, then, right, Mr. Grossberg? Uh, yes, yes, quite. Thank you. No, please, don't mention it. DL six. Never thought I'd hear I'd hear that name again. But wait, what does that case have anything to do with Mr. Edgeworth? It has everything to do with Mr. Edgeworth, my dear. The victim in the DL6 incident was none other than his father, Gregory Edgeworth. What? His father? If you want to know more, you should ask him yourself. Show him this, I'm sure he'll talk to you. Wait, this is a photograph of my mother. Okay, cool. Edgeworth, you pussy bitch, you better fucking talk to me! <laughs> yes! What's this? Oh, sorry. I thought it was Phoenix. What's this? I was hoping you'd gotten my message the first time. Edgeworth, what about your defense? It's no concern of yours. Guess he hasn't found anyone yet. Yet. Edgeworth, it's only been a matter of hours since you last visited, yet you've made incredible progress in your investigation. I'll admit it, I'm impressed, right? You were always single-minded in your work, though. Once you start on something, you always see it through, don't you? About the DL6 incident, right, DL6. I didn't want you to find out about it. About it. That is why I refused your offer to defend me. I'm sorry if it sounded like I thought you weren't up to the job. I just wanted to keep you away from DL6. Oh, I, got, I wanna cry. <laughs> so, do you still think it would have been better for me to stay away? I don't know. But, I see no point in hiding anything from you now. Very well. Ask whatever you like, and I will answer to the best of my abilities. The DL6 incident was when my father died. Which is why I chose the title I chose, you know, like... Edgeworth, childhood trauma. We, we love, we love childhood trauma. Right before my eyes, he was shot and killed and I saw it all. My memories from that time are foggy. I suppose it's a self-defense mechanism. 
In any case, a suspect was arrested. A man. It's pretty clear he was the only one who could have killed my father. The spirit medium they used to talk to my late father said the same thing. It was an attorney by the name of Robert Hammond that cleared the suspect's name. And Hammond is the victim in the Gord Lake murder? Correct. Um... That spirit medium, that was my mom. What? You mean you're... It's strange. I thought that terrible incident was about to end, and now... This... About to end? The GL6 incident happened 15 years ago. 15 years ago, on December 28th. December 28th? The statute of limitations on the case runs out in three days. What? Um, Nick, what does that mean? When a case statute of limitations ran out, legally, legally the case never happened. Three days from now, the L6 will be closed. Forever. Um, so was your father a lawyer? He was. Gregory Edgeworth. He was quite famous at the time, apparently. So you were sort of trying to follow in his footsteps. <laughs> I'd rather not talk about it. I mean, 15 years ago, right? Uh, Edgeworth is 24. So he was how old? <laughs> God, I'm not no no math. I mean, I'm I'm okay with math. I I realized actually like earlier today that I do know how to math. I just don't know how to brain pretty much. Um, because like uh, yesterday, my mom was so sweet and went to like get some groceries for me. And she asked me if I needed some baguettes because I usually eat that for breakfast. And I was like, oh yeah, I have 12 left. For some reason, that made sense to me. I don't know why. I was like, okay, what's like three times four? Ah, yes. 12. So I know, I know, I know the math. I just can't brain properly. <laughs> because I didn't have 12 left. I had eight left and I was like wait no 12 that doesn't make sense <laughs> it's like how many baguettes are there in one package <laughs> and it's like well that's three by two right <laughs> no three by two no wait yes no yeah 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 that's right that's right that's right so it's six six per packet uh, and then I had like one packet with only one pair left and then I had like a full packet left. So I had eight left. But my brain just, for some reason, went 12. And was like, yeah, no, that's correct. <laughs> because I did the math correctly, because I went three times four is 12. But I couldn't get it to add up. Because like, no, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> and what I'm saying right now doesn't make sense. I apologize. Anyways, uh, 25 minus 15, that would be way easier, that would be 10, right? So he would be 9? 9?! Oh my god. That must be fucking awful. What about the suspect? And what happened to the suspect? The one who got off innocent? I don't know. He disappeared from public view, nobody knows where to. If he's still alive, he'd be about 50 years old now. I guess I can understand why he'd go into hiding. It'd be hard to live a normal life after being in a murder- being a murder suspect in such a big case. Is that all you wanted to tell me? What about this photo? Hmm. Who would have thought there'd be a photo? Edgeworth, did you shoot him? What do you think, Wright? I don't think you're the kind to point a gun at anyone, no. So you didn't shoot him? No, I didn't. It wasn't me. Right. It pains me to ask you this now. I know, you want us to defend you! Yes. Will you? 
of course we won't <laughs> get out of here no of course we will i don't even want to try and tell him no uh, who could have guessed this day would come not me this is my chance to finally pay you back pay him back pay me back for what i don't remember ever doing anything for you never mind i guess you don't really need to know huh my letter of request please give it to detective gumshoe yes guess we should what's that a earthquake nick it's a big one Whoa! it's coming down huh. that was scary huh how where's Edgeworth? There! He's on the floor in a ball, shivering. I guess he doesn't do so well with earthquakes. I've heard of running, but curling up in a ball? Well, I guess we're done. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't seem like he's going to stand up anytime soon. Let's go, Nick. <laughs> You're just gonna leave him there? Uh, right. We have to give Edgeworth the letter of request to Detective Gumshoe. I can't believe you just got to leave him there. Man's just fucking having a panic attack and you were like, eh, yeah, you'll you'll do fine. <laughs> What's going on here? Eh. What's wrong, detective? This wild lady comes in here just a while ago. Says she came to talk to y'all after hearing what Mr. Wright had to say. What's this about, pal? A lot of hearts. Why are you going around finding more witnesses? You want to give Mr. Edgeworth a death sentence, pal? No, not at all. It just... I mean, she did see something. There's nothing I can do about that. I can't go around covering up evidence. Uh... You trying to say something about the way I do my job? No, sir. Anyways... Isn't it more logical than running? I don't know, the most logical thing, I guess, would be to, like, stand underneath, um... What's it called? Like, um... A door frame? Isn't that, like, the most, like, structurally sound thing? Something like that, anyways. Look what I got. Hey, you did it, pal! Glad I waited till the last minute to file those papers. I'll rip them up and start new ones for you. Thanks, detective. Well, see you in court tomorrow then. Good luck, pal. Hey! You guys feel that earthquake a little while back? I was worried. Worried? We're fine. I've lived out here my whole life. I'm pretty used to them by now. Oh, I wasn't worried about you two. I was worried about Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, right. He did seem to overreact a little now that you mention it. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. It was a pretty big quake. I'm going to go check on him. You two go eat and get your rest for tomorrow tri tomorrow's trial. Yeah, triangle? Life triangle? But yeah, you need to kneel uh, near s something sturdy. Yeah, but like, um, a door frame is usually pretty, pretty safe. After what I know, I'm, I may be wrong. I don't know. I've never experienced an earthquake. <laughs> At least I don't think I have. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I wonder what it is with Mr. Edgeworth and earthquakes. I wonder. He was never that scared of them when he was in school. Then again, I only really got to know him in fourth grade. He transferred to another school after that. I wonder what happened to Edgeworth. To be continued. Hell yeah, let's go! Chapter 2! Karma? That's right. Manfred von Karma. He's the best prosecutor there is. He hasn't lost a case in his 40-year career. 
He's the god of prosecution, right? A god. Not a single case? He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Hmm, sounds like someone else I know, Edgeworth. Hmm. You don't understand. I mean, he'll really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. That's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. Okay. He taught me what it really means to prosecute. What? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me, multiplied by a factor of ten. Ugh. So... So he was your teacher? Then, Mr. Edgeworth? Something like that. And now he's trying to get you found guilty? What a creep! I was taking seminars to become a volunteer for earthquakes. Not anymore, thanks to Ms. Rona. Ah, oh, I see. Oh, wait. Maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out. Not a chance. He hasn't lost once in 40 years. 40 years. He's as ruthless as me, times 20. That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. I guess that's something like Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia... Um, Maya? Uh-huh. We could really be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh. I can't. Sorry, I tried, I really tried, but I couldn't reach. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been training. My powers are weak again. Oh man, what bad timing. I'm really sorry. I try my best. I hope so. What are you whispering about? Uh oh, it's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. Yay, we have to defend Edgeworth. And this is not gonna be awful at all. It's just gonna be full of happy fun times. <clears throat> Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, your honor. Um, Mr. Fung Karma, is the prosecution ready? Fool. You seriously think that I would stand here and were I not completely prepared? Right. My apologies. He's even got the judge scared. Very well. Your opening statement, please. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Um, nothing, of course. That should be fine. The prosecution may call his first witness. What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? I call the detective in charge of this case. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe is first. Let's see how this goes. Describe the incident, now. Y yes sir. Detective Gumshoe looks nervous. Um, uh, please take a look at the map. The murder happened late Christmas Eve around midnight. There was one boat in the very middle of the lake. There were two men on the boat. Now there happened to be a woman camping here on the edge of the lake. At 12.10 a.m. she heard two pistol shots. Then the boat started to move. It went towards the boat rental shop. Rental shop. Blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Testify to the court about the arrest now. Wait, Mr. Von Karma. Yes. Actually, I'm the one that's supposed to be handling these proceedings. Wrong. There is only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel when I say the word guilty. That is your role. Yes, of course, you're quite right. No, he's not. Hey, who Men call in the station. Oh, that's just what he said. Okay, cool. Hmm. Oh shoot, that was the actual thing. Okay, it's fine. I'll, I'll read through it again. 
I forget how this game works. <laughs> hmm, I see. Very well. Begin your cross-examination, attorney. Now! God, I wish I had a voice filter or something. Man, man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. But the next morning, a body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Okay, that's that's what he said. Hmm. <sighs> You received a call from a man? Uh, yup. But you said there was a woman camping there. She was the one who heard, t heard the two gunshots, right? How in the hell am I supposed to... Oh wait, speaking of! Fuck, no, how am I supposed to do this? I didn't think this through. I did not think this through at all. Actually, like, maybe I can do it on uh, here. If I go to Streamlabs on here. Sorry, it's just kind of important or whatever. Just, uh, mm, maybe let me just try something real quick. I'm trying at least to be quick. Gotta log in. Dun, dun, dun. I was supposed to like add a. Um... There we go. I'm logged in to the right one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, alert box. Fuck off. Go to the. That, that one. No, that's not that one. It's a. It's the follows. There we go. And open alert variations. And we gotta enable. That one. Yep. I believe we're good to go now. Oh my god, it's. I, ca I can't even. I don't, I don't know how I'm like supposed to, like, uh. imitate his voice because it's ridiculously low. <laughs> That woman and the man who called in the report are two different people, obviously. Different people? There were two witnesses. Uh. Their testimonies were quite similar, however. Today I've summoned the woman who was camping. The woman who was camping. A lot of heart. What happened next, detective? We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Yeah. Didn't suspect anything of him. Him of anything at all. Did you find any clues on the body? A single bu bullet was recovered from the body. He was shot through the heart, fatally. Judge, here's the bullet. It didn't strike bone, so its shape is well preserved. Very well, the court accepts this bullet into evidence. I have to like this. <laughs> I'm like a fucking chicken. <laughs> uh -uh. Hmm. Why didn't you think he was suspicious? You should know. We have a deep trusting relationship with the prosecutors. I can't. Objection! <laughs> I can't do that. That's literally gonna fucking ruin my voice from here to fucking Tuesday. I don't fucking know. Detective, the court isn't interested in your musings. 
deep, trusting poppycock. I've never heard so many flippant comments from an active detective on the forums. Mm. Detective Gumshoe doesn't look so good. Continue now. Why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the boat. The murder weapon? A pistol. Detective Gumshoe, that is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. Right. Sorry, Your Honor. The murder weapon we found in the boat was decisive evidence. What about the pistol made of decisive evidence? Ugh. He has the same evil laugh as Edward. It's a laugh? I'm sorry. <laughs> there were fingerprints on the pistol found in the boat. They were clear prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. What? Order! Order! So, Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were found on the murder weapon. Yes, Your Honor. Judge, this is the weapon in question. Uh, accepted into evidence. Fired three times. Interesting. Members of the court. We now have the pistol used in the murder and the bullet found in the body. Detective. Y yes, sir. Was the bullet found in the body fired from this pistol? Yes. The ballistic markings on the bullet match the pistol. Hmm. <laughs> I'm like switching <laughs> like this. It's it's exhausting. <laughs> hey, Nick. <laughs> I mean, it's fun, but I'm just like, uh, it's just r really strange. <laughs> you know, like, I'm not I'm not used to doing this kind of thing. What does it mean, ballistic markings? Shocking. To imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. Nick, he's glaring at me. Very well, I'll explain. Actually, judge, you do it. Eh? M me? <clears throat> <clears throat> ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun. The barrel leaves distinctive marks on each bullet it fires. You can examine these ballistic fingerprints to see which gun fired the shot. It's quite accurate. Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found, the, found in the victim's heart was without, without a doubt fired from this pistol. This pistol, which as you may recall, was covered with the defendant's own fingerprints. To imagine someone who's there doesn't know simple manners and picking out on a child? Oh, yeah, forget. Maya. Order! Order! This is bad. This makes it look like Edgeworth did it. Well, Judge. I'd say it's almost decisive, yes. Honestly, I could declare a verdict at this point. However... You wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, and so I will take a brief break. I will call my witness after the recess, which will last ten minutes. Judge. Y yes What are you doing? A ten minute recess. Now. But wait, I... Just bang your flimsy gavel and get on with it, man. Man? <laughs> Ahem. This court will take a 10 minute recess. We just fucking started. Who's running this court anyway? Yeah, we just fucking started. Oh my god. Edgeworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were on the murder weapon? Uh, mm hmm. And that foggy photo makes one thing clear. The only one who could have shot that man was the person in the photo. True. Was that you in the boat? Yes, it was me. What? But you must believe me, I didn't shoot him. 
then who did? I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you right there? I heard a gunshot from very close by. Then the other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but I thought at the time that he had shot himself. You mean it was a suicide? That's the only explanation I can come up with. Huh. How am I going to convince anyone of that? Say, Maya? Huh? What? Any progress with Mia? Oh. Sorry. It's no good. Ugh. I know. I'm no good for anything, am I, Nick? If I can't call my sister, I might as well not be... Not be here, right? No. Of course not. I need you here. I can see you're always trying to help out. Even if you don't actually help, it's the thought that counts, right? It's okay, Nick. You don't have to make me feel better. I don't know anything about trials or defense. What's more, I'm a spirit medium who can't even contact spirits. Oh, everyone has their off days. I mean, I've just been getting le lucky lately. But you never know when my luck is going to run out. Really? Whoa, right. Don't jinx this case any more than it already is. It's bad for my heart. Oh. Oh, S sorry. Whoops. Also, uh, Bengi, I just have to, like, uh, tell you about something important that happened earlier uh, in uh, this episode. When we first ran into Gumshoe, and apparently, like, after the last trial, uh, the samurai one, apparently Edgeworth couldn't stop talking about Phoenix for some reason. Like, he was just, like, saying Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix all the time. We don't really know, like, what kind of tone he used or anything, but, like, Phoenix apparently seems to think that it was in, like, a negative way, but, like, I doubt it because, you know, he helped us out in that trial and it was such a good trial and I just, I love that so much to see them working together. It was so great. <sighs> Anyways, court is back in session. Mr. Von Karma, call your witness. Yes. Will Miss Lotta Hart take the stand? Oh, here we fucking go. Lotta Hart, you are a research student at a university. That I am. Good. Begin by telling us what you saw the night of the incident. And don't add anything trivial or subjective. Understand? Y'all need to learn some manners. Understand? Yeah, I understand, I understand. Oh, uh, very well. Your testimony, please. I get confused by all the voices. <laughs> It was Christmas Eve, just after midnight, I reckon. I was in my car. I heard this bang come up from the lake. When I looked out the window, I saw two gents in the boat. Then there was another bang. There wasn't there anything on the lake but that boat. Enough. Huh. Huh? Sorry. Judge. She happened to take a photo of the incident. This is that photo. Accepted as evidence. Well, this is a surprise. This looks like the very moment of the murder. The murder! Murder! <laughs> order! I will remove people from this courtroom if I do not have the order immediately. As the witness testified, she looked at the lake when she heard the shot. <laughs> there were no other boats on that lake. So the man in the boat with the victim must have been the one who shot him. Yes, it was the defendant, Miles Edgeworth. Order! 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 I will have order! <laughs> Mordor! <laughs> Mordor! hit my brain today. No, 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 no. Please don't hit your brain. Your brain is wonderful. 
Well, Judge. The evidence is decisive. I have very little doubt about this case. Very well, this court finds the defendant. Wait, Your Honor, I haven't cross-examined the witness yet. A cross-examination? We have photographic proof. What question can there possibly be? This photo is worth a thousand words and they all read guilty. You lose. Or... Do you claim to have found a contradiction in her testimony? Very well. If you have to, you may cross-examine the witness. You will only flounder and ask meaningless questions. You will fail to find anything. And then, I will have you held in contempt of court. Uh, Nick? Contempt? Contempt of court. You know... Uh, I... Guess I understand? Well, what are you going to do? Do you really think there was a contradiction with the facts in her testimony? I think there was. I think I noticed one little thing. Well, I'm impressed, Nick. I didn't notice anything. Right, let's take him on. Y yeah, I got a bad feeling about this. I understand. I will cross-examine the witness. Very well. I pray for your sake this isn't a waste of time. Christmas Eve, just after midnight. It's in my car, I heard this bang. Wait, actually, uh, looked out. Then there was another bang. Were you watching the very moment the shot rang out? Well, yeah, sure. Shut up! You're asking meaningless questions. Meaningless. Contradictions, Mr. Wright, not meaningless babble. Oh, Karma, I think I hate you. <laughs> Trying to keep me from talking to the witness. To what end? So I have to show evidence, I guess. There wasn't there a thing on that lake with that boat. Alright, what we got here? We got the... This thing. Automatically, let's just deal six thing. Overhead map of Gord Lake. Cool, thank you. Uh, the pistol bullet. And the pistol. Fired three times. have any idea? Feeling it's it's either uh, it's either this or what else was that? Or or the gun? Objection. Nope, that's not it. Okay, no. Objection. Uh, 
Mission overruled. One for the money and the free rise. It's two for the lie that you did not arise. Okay, what about this? Are you sure about that? Yeah, sure as a country gal can be. That sounds pretty sure. Press further. How come you're so sure? Well, heck, I scanned the whole lake. Scanned the whole lake? It almost sounds like she was more interested in the lake than the boat. Miss Hart, you... Can you shut up? <laughs> Mr. Wright, the witness has answered the question in full. Mm. No need for further questions. Objection sustained. Uh, that's what I'm... Sustained. Yes, of course. Oh, great. What am I supposed to do now? There weren't any contradictions in there. Sorry, Nick. Only my sister were here. Maya's really taking this hard. Let's try Gordy. Fuck, that's not Gordy. Mother... Fecker. Ha he hu ha. So you weren't looking at the lake at that time. The first shot. Nope. I looked after I heard that noise. Cool. She said that already. I asked her to find contradictions. Now, leisure, leisurely chat with a bootness. <laughs> okay, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna press everything until I get through it. And then I hope that there's gonna be like something at the end. I don't know. Just after midnight, you say? In other words, it was no longer Christmas Eve, but Christmas Day. Huh? Oh, yeah, well, yes. When did I die? 24th or the 25th. 12.15, that does add up. Mm. No, you want to find contradictions, but really, I don't fucking care to make his voice. I don't care. Mm. I hope your next contradiction is a little more relevant to the trial. Witness, continue your testimony. I was in my car. Why were you camping there anyway? I'm a research student at my university. I was taking pictures to use in my research. What research? This all sounds suspicious. Miss Hart, could you be more specific about your research? Can you shut the fuck up? What does the witness's motive in camping by the lake have to do with this case? The answer is nothing. I object to this line of questioning. Objection sustained. Wait, no, I'm the one who says that. Well, then say it already. Objection sustained. Thanks for nothing, Your Honor. Or this bang, or did that. Yeah. Could you clearly see the two men? Just look at the picture. Clear enough for you? Uh oh. Press further. Wait a second. I wasn't asking you about the photo. I was asking if you saw the two men. Uh, yeah, well, of course. The witness is suspicious you saw them. There's also a photo. Ugh! You best look elsewhere for your precious contradictions. He jumped in quick. He's hiding something. Enough! I think we've heard all we need to hear, Mr. Wright. I knew that would get me further. It seems you are unable to find a contradiction in the testimony worth noting. But, Your Honor... You keep your promise. Mr. Wright, I am afraid that I will have to penalize any further outbursts. Fuck! No! By holding you in contempt of court. And if that happens, you will have to leave the courtroom immediately. Understood. Uh, uh-huh. Nick. Father's testimony is fishy, Nick. Real fishy. I know what you mean, but if I can't say anything, what can I do? I believe we have covered the evidence sufficiently to make a decision. Then, p 
pass your judgment. Very well. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, please take the stand. Who said hold it? Oh, who was that? It was me. Maya. Is something wrong? Do you need to use the facilities? No, I do not. Lot of heart. Your testimony stinks. It's unclear whether you were actually looking at the lake. Well, at the lake. It's highly doubtful that you actually saw Mr. Edgeworth. Tell us the truth. This is a matter of life or death. Lotta, did you really clearly see Mr. Edgeworth that night? Did you see him fire that pistol? You will stand down. The court does not acknowledge the defense's outburst. Answer me, Lotta. What's the big idea? Treating me like some kind of criminal? I saw him. I swear it. I saw Edgeworth. Enough. Judge. He declared a defense in contempt of court. Y yes. Y yes, of course. I'm sorry, but you were warned. Guard, escort Mr. Wright out of the courtroom. He is in contempt of court and must leave. No. No. Wait. I, I was the one who made the outburst, Your Honor. Nick is innocent. Ha. Huh. What's the difference? All that remains is for the guilty verdict to be declared. Isn't that right, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Wrong. Wrong. What? Did you hear what Miss Hart just said? She said she clearly saw Mr. Edgeworth. That was not in the testimony. That changes her testimony and I have a right to cross-examine her again. Hell yeah, you... You go, Papa Flamebird. Order! 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 You're in contempt of court. It's too late for wild claims. Judge, sustain my objection. I'm sorry, Mr. Von Karma, but I cannot. What? Miss Lotta Hart has made a new testimony. The defense does have a right to cross-examine her again. But he is in contempt of court. No, I am. If you're going to arrest someone, arrest me. Hmm. Very well. Maya Fay, you will leave the courtroom immediately. Nick. I did what I could. You have to do the rest. Good luck. Uh, Maya. At least no more hand-holding, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I care not for this melodrama. Listen well, Mr. Wright. I do not tolerate badgering of my witnesses. I'm running out of time. I'd better find a contradiction in there or else. Mr. Wright, begin your cross-examination. Begin my saving. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Okay. Let me just save real quick. <laughs> I saw it clear as day. The man on that boat was Mr. Edgeworth. Th that's it? Uh-oh, I didn't know if I- I don't know if I can find anything in that. I can't squander- I can't squander Maya's efforts either. Okay, I know exactly. It's so clear as day. Yeah. You can't see it in the photo even! Got you. Got you, Miss Hart. Finally. What? You got what? Look at this photograph! <laughs> the photo I took? The very same. There's something I want you to see in this photo. It's quite clearly visible. The fog, Miss Hart. So? So? This picture was taken with professional high-quality film, correct? Yet even... Yet even it could not could not capture the faces of the men on the boats. Did you claim you saw Mr. Edgeworth? How? What? What? Mr. Wright has a point. Shut up. That's why I told her not to say that in her testimony. God, 
for being a fucking pro prosecutor who hasn't lost a case in 40 years. You fucking suck, dude! <laughs> That's why I told her not to say that in her testimony, please. Yet now she has said it. She has said it, Ms. Mr. Von Karma. How could you possibly see Mr. Edgeworth? Explain yourself. Miss Hart? What? Could you see the defendant that night? Of course, I said I could, and I meant I could. Then please testify as to the circumstances of your sighting. Did it finally found a hole in Von Karma's carefully vague testimony? You're right. It was a cold night and the fog was thick as grits. So once I was finished setting up my camera, I got back in the car. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. When I heard that noise out on the lake, I looked my binoculars. See? No problem. Huh. You use binoculars? Very well. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Bright. This one better be good. I'm saving again because I, I don't know if they're gonna like me um pressing a lot I don't care how many fun car make objections I get I'm going to find a hole in this testimony if it's the last thing I do ah, okay so it has to be something about the binoculars There was a heavy fog. How could binoculars change that at all? What do you mean? Even binoculars can't see through fog. But you say you clearly saw him? Um, I did, yeah. Enough. There's no room for doubt in her testimony. Hmm, she sounded pretty doubtful to me. But I have to find a clear contradiction first. I don't care. Okay, cool. <laughs> Binoculars? Yeah, binoculars. Yesterday you mentioned that you were out looking for shooting stars, correct? Well, yeah. Wouldn't you need a telescope, not binoculars for that? I got doubts about your camera, too. Was that really to take pictures of meteor showers? The camera is irrelevant to this case. Can't say that for certain. Mr. Wright, is the camera really relevant to this case? If you believe it is, you may continue with this line of questioning. But know this, if you find nothing with this, there will be consequences. Well, Mr. Wright, do you wish to press further about the camera? Yes, please. This is make it or break it time. The camera is of utmost importance, Your Honor. It is, perhaps, the key to this entire case. Therefore, I will continue my line of questioning. Wow, maybe I went a little overboard there. Very well. Miss Hart, you will testify to the court about the camera. Yeah, yeah, I hear, I hear you. The camera was set up to take pictures of a meteor shower. <laughs> yes! You were photographing shooting stars? That's a lie. Says who? I saw the camera you set up yesterday. It was pointed directly at the lake. You have to point a camera upwards to take photos of the stars, Miss Hart. Ooh. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? The witness was not at the lake to photograph shooting stars, Your Honor. Hmm. Well then, what exactly was she photographing? Your Honor, take a look at this. What was... What was Miss Hart trying to photograph at the lake? Gordy! Miss Hart, this is what you were trying to photograph. What's this? A newspaper article? Gordy? I have a sighting at Gord Lake. Well, Miss Hart, I, I never heard of no lake monster. You got proof or something? Let's see you prove that I was down at the lake trying to photograph this Gordy. Uh. I mean, it was pointed at the lake. 
No, fuck, that's not what I meant. Your ineptitude is entertaining, Mr. Wright, but enough is enough. You have had enough of baseless claims that made without a hair of evidence to support them. Alright, if that's how you want to play, I'll show you evidence. Thank God, I fucking misclicked. <laughs> Mr. Wright, are you sure about this? I am sure sick of that smarmy prosecutor putting me down. Or did he taunt me so I'd get mad and make a mistake? Very well, let's see it. And no joking around this time, please. I'm saving again. <laughs> I'm scared. Listen, if he fucking terrifies me, I don't know what's gonna happen. Like, I don't know if I have to like go through like everything again. I don't know. I don't know. Ooh. What is proof that the witness was trying to photograph Gordy? I mean, the lake photo. Here's my proof. It is simple. If it's simple, then why have you obviously made an error? Fuck me. Was that? Go home. Consider a career change. How can this so casually toss this aside this evidence? Oops. Wrong evidence. Cool. Whatever. Fine. And it's the camera. The proof, Miss Hart, is your own camera. Your camera was set to take photos in response to loud noises, correct? Thus, this photograph here, taken when a gun fired on the lake. And here, this article about Gordy. According to this article, Gordy made a loud noise when it emerged. Well? You were trying to photograph Gordy, weren't you? That's why you had set your camera to respond to loud noises. Order! Order! I see. I too thought it was a little strange. Yeah, sure. Well, Miss Hart. You were camping there to try and take a photo of Gordy, weren't you? Yeah. Not bad. Are all you lawyers that smart? So smart, boy. I was down there trying to photograph Gordy. You got me. So what? Huh? That don't change what I saw, does it? Exactly. What you just used several precious minutes of a time to prove is nothing more than that the, than that the witness is an idiot who thinks monsters exist. Hey! But as she so succinct... Su How do you say that? Hold on. <laughs> Open my... <laughs> um, my uh, dictionary. App, uh, succinct, 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 succinctly, okay. Ah, because success, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. But as she so succinctly said, so what? It changes nothing. Not true. You were hiding the whole thing about Gordy for some reason. I know it. What could it have been? Whatever it is, I'm getting to the bottom of this. Miss Hart, why did you hide the fact that you were searching for Gordy from the court? Please revise your testimony. Right, fine. I'll testify. It won't change nothing, though. Something will change. It has to. And I'm going to spot it. Oh... I'm not doing well. Actually, I'm not a research student at a university. I'm an investigative photographer. Imagine what a scoop it'd be if I got a picture of that monster. That's why I was camping out by the lake. But that's all I was hiding. When I heard the bang, I looked right, I looked right straight out the lake. There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched the boat that whole time. Then I saw a flash near one of the men's hands, and I heard another gunshot. I was looking right at that boat the whole time. Cross my heart and hope to fry. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Shut up! God, nobody fucking likes you! <laughs> the witness's testimony is unchanged from before. Whether she is a research student or a photographer has no bearing on this case. She literally just mentioned fucking lights. She never mentioned that in the first place. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Take a fucking seat. <laughs> Sorry, he aggravates me. I'm just... 
Oh, I want to fight. <laughs> Let me fight you, old man. <laughs> okay. Whether she is a research student or photographer has no bearing on this case. There is no need to waste more of our time with another pointless cross-examination. Uh, hmm. Yes, please object, Papa, Papa Flamebird. I claim the defense is right to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Oh, Karma's up to something. I know it. He doesn't want me to cross-examine her because... Why? Is there a contradiction? Very well, you may begin the cross-examination. He looks like a pigeon that was drained of blood. <laughs> Why are you not wrong, though? <laughs> that would be first. <laughs> Very funny. You understand that this is your last chance at a cross-examination, Mr. Wright. If there is no problem with the testimony this time, we will let the witness leave. I will announce my verdict at that time, Mr. Wright. Understood. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh god, a lot of you are killing me. Actually, not research. Okay, whatever. Scoop, whatever, don't care about the scoop. This one was camping out. This one was hiding. But that's all I was hiding. You don't say that if that's all you were hiding. <laughs> Heard a bang, it looks strange. Blake, there's much else to look at, so I just watched that bolt the whole time. So, flash. There wasn't much else to look at? Well, you won't be looking for Gordy. There wasn't much else to look at? Yep. I don't know. If she heard a bang and she thought Gordy was out there, I kind of thought she'd waste any time looking at a boat. What? What do I do now? What are you giving me that look for? Definitely suspicious. Maybe it's time for some evidence? Witness, continue. Hold your hush puppies, Pops. I'm getting there. You know what? I'm saving. <laughs> no, let me heckin' save Jesus. There we go. Objection. Yes! Miss Harch, were you really looking at that boat? What's with you? Of course I was looking at it. It was the only thing out there. Any normal person would be looking at it. I agree, any normal person would. But you are far from normal. Wow. That's not very nice, Phoenix. What? You don't want to step over here and say that? You were camping at the lake to take a picture of Gordy. Think about it. What would you do if you heard a loud noise? You'd be scanning the lake for any sign of Gordy, that's what. You wouldn't give the boat a second thought. Order! Continue, Mr. Wright. You testify that you were watching the boat through binoculars. However, you wouldn't need binoculars to watch that boat. You needed them to search for Gordy, and that's what you were doing. Well? Huh. Well, now that y'all mention it, I did sort of take my binoculars and kind of scan the lake a bit. I mean, Gordy might be out there and all. Miss Hart, are you saying that you were not watching the boat then? Sorry, y'all. I wasn't fibbing, really. I was just... I thought, you know, I could be witness to a murder and all. Lada, this is not what it's about. <laughs> it's not about being a witness. It's about... <laughs> God, girl, you... You're killing me here. I kind of got excited. I was... Sh I was sure I was watching that boat. Till now. This... This is totally uncalled for. But hey... You got the photograph, you got proof! Hmm. Still, we can't see who is shooting who in this. Right, right. That's why I took this photo. Witness, that's enough. Can you shut the fuck up, please? I mean, if anyone is, like, being gonna be held in contempt of court, it should be him, right? Like, am I understanding this correctly? It should be him. You've had a long day. Shut your pie hole. Shut my what? What was she going to say? She took the photo and... What? Wait a second. She even had a photograph to prove it. You really can't tell from the photo who is shooting. That's why she says she's going to enlarge the photo. 
He said it'll drop the quality a bit, but should let us see who's who. I don't remember. Let us hear her, Dom. No, it's because it's because he need he needs to win. He uh he has such um a fragile ego. He needs he needs to win. Like you you can't like be better than him in court. Or it will fucking ruin him. <laughs> she enlarged that photo. Why won't Fun Karma let her show it? I've got a hunch. I bet that enlarged photo shows something bad for Fun Karma. This is my chance. If I'm wrong though, it'll mean prison for Edgeworth. Or worse. What should I do? Make her show the enlargement! Miss Hart! Look at this photograph! <laughs> you enlarged this photograph, did you not? Yeah, I did. Why has that enlargement not been presen presented to the court? Shut up! Because it does not exist. What are you talking about? You were the one who told me not to show it in court in the first place. You old fool. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Von Karma? Oh. Um, Miss Hart, show the photo to the court. Show us the enlargement. Shut up. The prosecution objects to the submission of this evidence. Objection denied. The witness will show the enlargement to the court. Here it is. Hmm, still cannot see who is firing in this. It could be the defendant, or maybe it's not. Regardless, I'll accept this as evidence. Wait, when was this taken? Oh yeah, it's, just, it's the same one, stupid. Happy now, Mr. Wright. Hmm, there has to be something. You asked for the enlargement, you got the enlargement. And little good it has done any of us. That's why I requested she not show it. But their dominant hand is left. That is the clue. Good job, Bengi. <laughs> hmm, I suppose this means that the cross-examination is over, obviously. Then I would like to close the cross-examination of Miss Lotta Hart. And none too soon. That was a flag flagrant waste of my time. Mr. Von Karma, do you have anything to add? I stated everything I needed to when this trial began. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Nothing, of course. Then I believe it is time for me to declare my verdict. Wait, it's not supposed to go like this. There has to be a clue in this photo somewhere. This is bad, real bad. What should I do? Uh. Save. <laughs> no, save. <laughs> it's where I haven't read anything. No, 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 no. It's cool. Um, I think I think it's nice, and I, I I I want people to like join me in playing this because I played it before, and I feel like it's more fun to like include the people in chat, you know. So please do feel free to like come with your theories and stuff. Like I love that. I love that so much because I know exactly what's happening here, and I know exactly what I have to do. I just don't remember um, in what order, I guess. And sometimes you have to like press and find certain information and stuff. Which is what I struggle the most with. <laughs> but, yeah. Let me object to it. Your Honor! There is something this decidedly strange with this enlargement. What might that be? Mr. Wright! You will show the court what you mean. What about this photo is strange? Okay, there was nothing. Show the judge what's strange about this photo. Here, Your Honor. The shooter? I'm not sure I understand. What about the shooter is strange? Look at the hand holding the pistol, Your Honor. The hand? That hand directly contradicts another piece of evidence. This man's left hand... Oh, no, sorry. This man's left hand does what? Let me show you. I'll show you the evidence that left hand contradicts. The gun, because it bears prints from Edgeworth's right hand, the evidence is clear. 
The man in this photograph is holding that pistol in his left hand. However, the prints on the murder weapon were from Edgeworth's right hand. Ergo, was was someone someone is starting to to speak like Edgeworth? Ergo, Phoenix. <laughs> Sorry. The man shooting the pistol in this photograph is not Mr. Edgeworth. Now that everyone in the courtroom has quieted down, I would like to reconvene this court of law. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You have given us definitive proof today. We now know that it was not Mr. Edgeworth who fired the pistol that night. However, this leaves us with a rather large problem. If Mr. Edgeworth didn't do it, then who shot our weak victim? Precisely. As we have seen, there were no other people on the lake that night. Who but the defendant could have shot the, the victim? Larry! <laughs> Let's bring Larry to the stand! Oh my god. Oh god. I mean... The victim himself? There is only one explanation remaining. The man who shot the victim was none other than the victim himself. Order! Order! God, I feel like I... I... Peaked the microphone really bad. <laughs> so you are saying that the victim committed suicide? Yes, Your Honor. I can think of no other explanation. Hmm. Indeed, that does seem to be the only remaining option. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. But suicide is out of the question. What? An examination of the victim's wound reveals the distance at which he was shot. The distance? The victim was clearly shot from further than a meter away. A meter? That's three feet! There is no way it could have been a suicide. Order! Order! Mr. Von Karma, are you sure of the accuracy of your data? Of course, I had already considered the possibility of suicide, you see. Hmm, huh. I see. Very well, allow me to state my opinion. Considering the situation, the shooter had to be the defendant, Mr. Edgeworth. However, the prints on the gun reveal that the shooter was not Mr. Edgeworth. This is a conundrum. Therefore, I would like to suspend proceedings for this trial for the day. The court orders the defense and the prosecution to further investigate this matter. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. That is all. This court is adjourned. We made it through. Alive. <laughs> Somehow. God. <sighs> that was a close one. Hey! Don't you have anything to say? No, I have yet to be declared innocent, right? Well, yeah, but... What happened out there on that lake anyway? If he didn't commit suicide, then who? The shooter was about a meter away, too. What? Don't give me that look. I did not kill him. I was just kidding around. Hmm. Look. I'm going to go check on Maya. Oh. Right. What? Tell her something for, for me. What? Tell... Tell her to watch what she says in court. That's all. Would it kill you to just state how you really feel with that thanks, Edgeworth? a transcript of Lada's entire testimony. I thought it might give me some ammunition for the trial tomorrow. Of course, she didn't see the shooter. So the only part of her testimony that stood was the bang she heard.
I'm on part three, right? Yeah. I'm on part three and I'm almost three hours in. That means I'm like less than an hour per part, I guess. All right, here we go, the chances is in there. Maya! Hey, Nick, it's you! I'm glad Mr. Edgeworth made it through the day, okay? It's a relief. Hey, why'd you do that anyway? I don't know. I just knew I had to do something. I know I'm not the lawyer my sister was. I'm sorry. Well, you did save the trial. Just behave from now on, okay? Oh, okay. Have you been questioned yet? No, not yet. Detective Gumshoe was here just now. He said, seeing as this is your first offense, we'll let you go after questioning. Huh. <sighs> oh, and he wanted me to get bail money ready. You can pay for me, okay? Huh? How much? I don't know. I guess they'll send you a bill or something. When I picture giant bales of money every time I hear the word bail. Any luck with Mia? None. I can't get through to her at all. I tried. I really did. I don't know what to do. I think I probably shouldn't have stopped my training. Hmm. She sounds like she really did do her best. I should check and see if there are any waterfalls in the local area. I wonder if I'll ever see my sister again. Okay, whatever. Uh, let's go to... Where exactly? I want to talk to Gumshoe, maybe? Detective Gumshoe is not here. Okay, Gumshoe is at the scene again. Really? He's a live wire, that one. Got into a fight with the chief for not following protocol. Not following protocol? I bet he wouldn't help them build the case against Edgeworth. Okay, let's go to Ward Lake. There are fewer than there were yesterday, but the cops are still around the park. I wonder if Detective Gumshoe is here today. I haven't seen Larry around today at all. Probably off paying through the nose on a date with the lovely Kionse. Boat rental shop. Looks like the boat rental shop is closed today too. I guess not the boat rental shop then. Uh, the woods. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Hey, pal. The trial today at, um... Yes, what about the trial? Well, I was going to say good show, but it wasn't really all that. Though you did save Mr. Regeworth, I guess. I just wasn't sure how to thank you, you know? Uh, thanks. Tomorrow's trial. Detective Gumshoe, any idea what strategy Von Karma is planning for tomorrow? Sounds like he's bringing in another witness. Another witness? Alright, he said something about that in the trial today. Two witnesses. I was wondering who the other witness was. Uh, who was it? Sorry, pal. As much as I'd like to, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. Right. Alright, I wanted to ask you something about Edgeworth. What's up? Is he afraid of earthquakes? I never heard anything about that before. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't talk about himself too much, see? But there's one thing that's clear as day. Him hating crime the way he does, and him becoming a prosecutor, and him being scared of earthquakes, it all started with that incident. A DL6 incident? Yup, that's the one. Uh, in case uh, you haven't been uh, not paying attention, but... <laughs> But in case you haven't been um, following uh, that closely, DL6 is uh, the case 15 years ago when Edgeworth was 9, I believe. And uh, he witnessed his own father get shot. Or at least get murdered. Something like that. <clears throat> And its statute of limitations is about to run out really soon in like 
two days or something. 15 years ago, when he saw his father's shop before his very eyes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Gamshu, for... for refreshing our minds with that. He still feels the pain now. You can see it in his eyes. What about Maya? I wanted to talk to you about Maya Faye. Huh? He's not out on bail yet? That's strange. I told him to let her go as soon as they had their report written up. Man, I don't know what would have happened in that courtroom today if it weren't for her. Seeing her getting dragged out by the bailiff. I'll be honest with you, pal. I shed a tear or two. Mr. Edgeworth, he was so moved I saw his lip trembling. Really? Cold as ice Edgeworth? I was really grateful for what she did, you know. I'm going to head back to the station. I'll get the report on Maya and get her out of there as soon as I can. Thank you. Oh, wait. Um, I was wondering, how much is the bail going to be? Don't worry about that. Mr. Edgeworth is posting the whole amount. I love Edgeworth! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Edgeworth? Didn't I tell you? He's grateful to her for what she did. Alright, pal. Well, don't forget to go pick her up, okay? Hmm. Maybe I can get Edgeworth to pay this month's rent, too. Hey, Nick! You finally came! They just finished the paperwork. I'm free to go! Free at last, huh? Those interrogator interrogators were really mean. They were like, Okay, what did you do this time? Like I was some kind of criminal. Can you believe it? Well, they let you out in the end, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Oh, that reminds me. Thanks for bail. Thank Edgeworth. Huh? He posted bail for you. Said he was grateful for what you did. Mr. Edgeworth did that? I have to make it up to him. We've got to win this case, Nick. Okay. Uh, let's go back to Gord Lake, I guess. Sorry, the life is real bad, so I can't really follow where I will. Um, no, no worries. It's fine. There aren't many cops around today, are there? They're probably back at the precinct, working up the case against Edgeworth. Hmm. Hey, y'all. Hey, it's Lana. Y'all really did it today. What do we do now? Nah, I'm not complaining. See, I did a little thinking. A little self-reflection, you might say. I realized that being a witness is a mighty big responsibility. But I just went up there and started blabbing any old thing that came to mind. Lotta. So, you see, I want to make it up to y'all. Make it up? Making it up, please. Lotta, what do you mean by making it up to us? Well, you see. Actually, I got a bit of information for you. What? That phone karma didn't want me to say nothing about it. What information? Now we're getting to the heart of it. See, I reckon we might be able to do ourselves a little exchange. Exchange? Um, I thought this was to make it up to us. Right. I propose a little exchange to make it up to you. What? Information don't come cheap, my friend. Uh, hey, I see you thinking my, my, how unsophisticated these southern folks are. It's written all over your face. Let me tell you, most southerners are way more sophisticated than you. I'm just the exception, okay? Well, what'll it be? We got a deal or not? What do we do, Nick? A deal or no deal? deal sure fight whatever we don't have any other lead so I don't think we have a choice here okay how much huh you completely off your rocker I may not be sophisticated but I'm not trying to rob the poor huh the only fair exchange for information is information listen good what I need from you is information about Gordy whoa 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 Gordy but Gordy doesn't I mean Gordy might not exist then bring me proof that shows he don't uh, I'll be keeping watch from the car, okay? You see something? You'll come to me first, got it? Okay. Right, see y'all later.
Okay, Nick, let's get hunting. Hunting? You don't seriously mean... Gordy? I sure do. What about Edgeworth? We're searching for Gordy for him, Nick. Don't you get it? For him, sorry. I don't know. Mm. Okay, and how exactly do we search for a make-believe monster? Maybe we can find a monster myth specialist. Alright, let's go back here. Oh, uh, here we go. What's that? The, the steel samurai, Nick! Yo, Maya! Larry, what the heck is that? Oh, it was my girl Keonse's idea. She was all, if you like, put this here, it would be like, really cool. But she gave it to me along with the banner. Wow! It's really impressive. She could... It's, it's really impressive she could find those for you. Well, she knows a lot of people. And that's how that show's finished now, so she got them for free. Right. Hold on. Wait, um... I swear they changed these to actually be like actual flags. They didn't used to look like this in the original. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. I'm gonna try and like find them. Um... Uh, is a tourney, a gourd, lake, beach. I guess, I guess they do. Well, actually, there is like one... Um... One flag that's missing. Oh, no, I don't want to fucking walk through. I'm not looking at it, I'm just like... That's not what I want to do. Okay, fine, I guess I just have to fucking download it or whatever. It's fine. like swear that they look different I mean I guess kind of this is what like the original screenshot looked like or whatever so we're like missing whatever flag is that Belgium I mean the flags are still not really accurate as far as I'm aware I don't really know like I can obviously tell the Union Jack and China and South Korea, Brazil, America. I think that one's supposed to be Germany, but the yellow or orange part or whatever is um, kind of desaturated and looks really weird. But like none of the others look like that. So I don't understand why that one has to look like that. I don't know, it's just weird. Anyways, <laughs> that was kind of random, I'm sorry. So yeah, let me look at this. Doesn't that steel samurai look a little out of place? I mean, it's so huge. I guess it's good advertising. Something about this still samurai just doesn't work for me. Huh, really? It looks pretty well made to me. Huh, still a novice, aren't you, Nick? Really? True connoisseurs like Cody and me don't fall for this kind of stuff. These steel samurai fans are obviously in a league of their own. Dude. These flags look sadly out of place here. 
flapping listlessly back and forth in a cold wind under a cold sky. I don't know. I think it gives the place a kind of festival atmosphere. It reminds me of the War of the Eyeglasses. The War of the what? Huh? What? You mean you don't know the War of the Eyeglasses? What the heck is it? Our local fair used to do it every summer. Huh, I guess we're the only ones. I ask again, what the heck is it? What's this machine? That? That's a compressor. I used it to fill up that balloon there with air. Huh, neat. Just got it repaired today, yesterday. Man, what a drag that was. Okay, this is same, same, same old. Okay. Yo, Nick! What happened with Edgy? Well, we made it through the first day in Quartal, right? I don't know how good our prospects are from here on, though. Huh. Hey, Larry, did you know Mr. Edgeworth's secret we weakness? He's terrified of earthquakes. He acts like a little boy. Maya, please. The dude obviously has, has some kind of trauma. And she's like, ha ha ha, she, he's scared of earthquakes. Maya, please. I thought you were better than this. Huh? That's weird. I don't think he was ever like that in school. No? Really? Oh, we were only in the same class for a little bit. He transferred schools pretty quickly. Transfer? Right, when the DL6 incident happened. Doesn't look like Larry knows about it, though. Hey, Larry. When did you get that big... Thing. Huh? Oh, the big guy? I've had that for about a month. Yeah. It's a big hit with the kids. Why wasn't it there yesterday? Huh? Huh? Oh, right. Um, the, the compressor was busted. Compressor? Yeah, it's that little unit by my hot dog stand. That's what I used to put air in the steel samurai. It broke a little while ago, so I sent it in for repairs. Oh, and here I thought you'd inflated it by yourself. Sorry, Nick. I don't know much about that. I'm a mere solar hot dogs. Actually, uh, do you know anything about Gordy by a per chance? That's the guy that's selling my dogs faster than I can cook them. Do you think Gordy really exists? I think somebody probably saw something else that they just thought was Gordy. God, that was a fucking struggle to read for some reason. But I'll keep selling samurai dogs until the truth's out. That's all you have to say? Do you have anything to say about this? Okay, no. Do you have- no. Anything to say about anything at all? Uh, pistol- no. Both rentals. Oh, something is happening. Hmm. It's always so quiet here. I wonder if the boat shop is closed for good. Well, with the murder on, on the lake and all. Probably just taking a vacation till it blows over. I get it. There, pal. What's up? You look out of sorts. Wait, I didn't go and do something that's going to hurt Mr. Edgeworth's case again. What do you mean again? Whatever, have a seat, pal. I'm here for you if you need anything besides money, that is. Investigation. How is the investigation proceeding? It's not really. We have another meeting coming up. We're supposed to talk about Mr. Edgeworth's motive. His motive? My hair is a mess. Uh, you can really look and tell. See, Mr. Edgeworth's father died in the DL6 incident. 
and the guy who got the lone suspect declared innocent was the victim in this case. Robert Hammond. You're saying that's why Mr. Edgeworth shot him. Edgeworth never talks about this about his past. Past. I bet they'll drag that out and hit him with it in court tomorrow too. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. I gotta admit, it doesn't look good, pal. Say, Detective Gumshoe, do you know Gordy? The monster down in Gord Lake? Not personally, no. Well, we're looking for it. Huh? Are you out of your mind? Eh. You got time to go for wild monster hunting? How about doing a little questioning for me then? Oh, Detective Gumshoe is scaring me, Nick. I told Detective Gumshoe about the deal with Lotta. Nick, try telling him sooner next time. Uh, sorry. I see, pal. Sorry for shouting at you. Okay. I, Detective Gumshoe, will aid in your aid your search for Gordy. Huh? I'll loan you one of our newest secret weapons for finding evidence. Really? You can take whichever one you like. Okay, give us the goods. Hold on now, everything in due time. First, let me show them to you. These are our best and brightest. Introducing secret weapon number one, missile. M missile? He's a canine police dog, still in training. Missile, missile, here boy. Yes! Dog! We love puppies. Good puppy. <laughs> Here he is. Hey, he's cute. Look, Nick. Cute dog. Cute dog. And this will help us how? Next, secret weapon number two, a fishing pole. Here, this is my own personal pole. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for a monster. Yeah. How are we supposed to catch a whole sea monster with a fishing pole? Never know till you try, pal. Okay, this next one is the last one. No, please, I'm already overwhelmed by your choices. Secret weapon number three, a metal detector. Here. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for something alive. Right. How are we supposed to find it with a metal detector? Hey, you never know. It might have been eating soda cans. Well, which will it be? I'm gonna go with the... Um, 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 um. um, I can't make up my mind, Nick. They all seem so perfect. I can't make up my mind either. For the totally opposite reason. Well, I suppose it can't hurt to borrow one of them. The metal detector, please. Can we borrow that metal detector? Sure thing, pal. I'm not sure what we're going to find with this. Remember, you're hunting for a monster. Anything is possible. Anything. Ah. Okay, let's go to the beach. Beach, let's go get away. To the boat rental shop. Nick! It's beeping! The metal detector's found something! Sure is loud enough about it. Whatever it is, it must be in those bushes. Go check it out, Maya. Why do I have to check it out? Nick! Look! Huh? An air tank? Huh. The valve looks broken. I thought it was Gordy. Maya, first of all, why would Gordy be in the bushes? And second of all, why would a metal detector react to a sea monster? Oh. Huh? There's something wrapped around this air tank. It looks like a string of flags. Well, we might as well take it with us now that we found it. 
It's heavy. This is yours. What? An air tank? What about it? Larry, I wanted to ask you about this tank. Is it yours? Say, is this air tank yours? Why Why would I have something like this? Have a thing like that? Look, see how there's a string of flags around the, the tank valve? It's just like the string of flags around your steel samurai there. It must be a co coincidence. There are strings of flags everywhere these days. Like elementary schools. And used car dealerships. Look, why would I need a tank anyway? To inflate something. You used this to inflate that, didn't you? I inflate what? What else? That big puffy steel samurai. Now why would you go asking me a question like that? Looks like I hit the nail on the head. Right. Right. Actually, um... See, the compressor I always use was on the fritz. So I tried using the tank to inflate it. Just once. And, uh, it didn't go so well. As I suspected. It's more about the tank. It didn't go so well? Uh, yeah. Do you think it could be a little more specific? C come on! Look, it's embarrassing, so I really don't want to talk about it. Tell us! Tell us! Fine. Whatever. It's like what I said. The compressor was busted. So I took the tank and tried to fill the samurai up with that. And then... Blam! The valve busted open and made this incredible noise. And that tank there took off like a rocket. And it took my poor deflated steel samurai with it. What? Off into Gourd Lake? It sure scared me out of my gourd, that's for sure. Flying air tank. Um, so the tank and the steel samurai you were trying to fill up flew away. What happened next? Well, all that happened on the 20th, 20th or so. The 20th, a week ago. Was this? Don't say. Now, as far as I could see, the tank went flying out into the lake. So I went out every night in a boat looking for it. I mean, Kionse gave me that steel samurai after all. And when did you find it? Just the night before last. I flew away. I flew way out there. It took me four whole days to find it. The night before last was the night of the murder. Sorry for not telling you, Nick. Actually, I was here on the night of the murder. You see, I went home before midnight. So, you didn't know about what happened? No. That's too bad. It's not all bad. We've solved one mystery at least. A mystery? Maybe we should go tell her. Oh, Lotta! I have some bad news! Gordy doesn't exist! <laughs> Hey, y'all. Well, y'all found anything out about Gordy? Um, no, nothing. Well, keep moving. It gets cold out here at nighttime. It is a little chilly. I think I have to sneeze. Whoa, no you don't. No sneezing. I told y'all, no sneezing. See, I set the camera to respond to things a little softer than a bang. It a trigger on one of Fun Karma's finger snaps now. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, sorry is nice, but what about my film? Nick, pay the lady. <laughs> okay, cool. Whatever. I learned something in today's trial, that's for sure. Testifying serious business. That's why I decided not to talk about that case anymore. Huh? Whoa, didn't you say you had information about the case? Tell us that at least. Like I said, I'll trade it for the dirt on Gordy. Well, Mr. Lawyer, I got the info y'all need. Y'all got the scoop on Gordy for me yet? Gordy doesn't exist. Lara, there is no such thing as Gordy. What? How can y'all be so sure? Really, Nick? You got some proof Gordy don't exist? Proof that Gordy doesn't exist? 
is here. Of course I have proof. No lawyer worth his badge would make a claim without the proof to back it up. Okay. Here's a proof that Gordy doesn't exist because it's an air tank. Larry's air tank? What are y'all doing with an air tank? This is Gordy. Um, excuse me? What exactly are you seeing, Nick? There's a stand near here, a hot dog stand. There's a giant inflatable samurai doll there. About a week ago, an idiot who happens to be a friend of mine tried to fill it. He used this air tank and when the valve blew, the tank flew into the lake. Apparently it made a pretty loud bang when it flew. A bang. The tank, along with the still deflated samurai, fell into the lake. But how the hell did the fucking tank get in the bushes? That's what I want to know. At the same time... A couple was taking a photograph of the lake. Oh, wait, I want to... Wait, what? I mean, maybe? <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell. This photo. Wait, so you're saying that Gordy is really the steel samurai? Well, that's a fine way to ruin a gal's dreams. Sorry, Lotta. Nah, it's okay. You win. I'll give you your info like I promised. Poor Lotta. So, tell us this information you have. A promise is a promise, I guess. I overheard the cops around here saying something about the witness tomorrow. They said he's the caretaker of the boat rental place up the path here. Boat rental? There's someone there? I mean, it looks so deserted. Just no guy living all by himself. You should go check it out. Thanks, Lana. We will. Let's go cr Let's get cracking, Nick. Hold on. Something else? Yeah, the night of the murder. My camera clicked twice, you know. Wait, so you have another photo? Well... Yeah, but there's nothing in it at all. Just the lake. I figured it wouldn't be much use, of, use as evidence, so I kept it to myself. Well, it might not be helpful at all, but... Here, take it. So this was before... Four. Christmas, I guess. Every day. Bye now. Y'all take care. Time for me to pack up and leave. Poor Lotta. It's all Larry's fault. The legend still lives on, I guess. The legend? Yeah, the legend of Larry. Familiar to all who know him for any length of time. When something smells, it's usually the butts. Hmm. Someone should whip that bus into shape. Okay, can we go to the boat rental place now? Do 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 Okay, cool. Hey, Nick! This is the boat shop that Lotta, Lotta was talking about. You're right. Doesn't seem to be anyone around at all. Well, let's go check it out anyway. Meg, <laughs> that you. Ah! Hey, is that Keith with you? Where have you two been? I've been worried sick. Nick, you handle this. Uh, I think I'll leave this one up to you, Maya. Meg! N yes Finally made up your mind, have you? M my mind? You'll run the pasta shop when I'm gone. Pasta? Glad you hear it, glad you hear it. You make your old man proud. When you kids left the house, I didn't know what to think. How am I supposed to keep this place running, an old man like me? 
Polly, the kids are home. Hello, hello. Nick, what was that? A parrot. The one on that perch. Case. Yes. I leave the wet noodle in your capable hands, Sonny. Nick, what's the wet noodle? Um, based on the available evidence, I'd say it's the name of his pasta shop. That's a relief, isn't it, Polly? Hello, hello, Scrap. Yep. He fell asleep. I guess he's relieved. Let me just take a look around your... Wow, he has a television in here, too. Look, Nick, he has an electric blanket on his table. Looks warm. That's a great idea. We should do that at the office. We could sit down with our clients, snug and warm, and drink hot cocoa. And what, talk about murders? Aw, oh, you're a party pooper, Nick. This fishing pole looks expensive. That's just the, okay. Dun, 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 dun. Looks like a kitchen unit. It's pretty clean. Funny, it doesn't look like the type would keep things tidy like that. You're forgetting, Nick. He's running a pasta shop here. Wow, what an amazing parrot that is. Good morning. Hello? He ignored me. What? You forgot, Meg? You gotta call her name first. Her name? Polly, how you been? Hello, hello. <laughs> See? Neat. So the parrot's name is Polly. Too bad all she can say is hello. <laughs> Old Polly can say lots of things. You just need to know the secret words. Secret words? Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly! <laughs> Cute! Maya's found a new friend. Love that for her. Well, there are lots of various fish in Gord Lake, aren't there? Something's funny, Nick? Something's funny, Nick. All these fish are saltwater fish. Um, a pasta shop? A uh, yep. To think the wet noodle will live on when I'm gone. My father started it, you know. So that makes you a two of the third again generation, Meg. Y yes. Tomorrow we'll start with the secret of do secrets of Dotasin. Dotasin? You too, Keith. Y yes. You'll be the best pasta wrangler the West has ever seen. Pasta wrangler? The West? Isn't pasta from Italy? Meg! Yes? You know, the best pasta has always been made west of the Rockies, don't you? R right, of course. Everybody knows that. Nick? Huh? How long do we have to keep up this all-in-the-family charade? This old man must know something about the murder. We're not leaving until we find out what that is. <laughs> um, this is a boat rental shop, right? What are you talking about? This here is the Palace of Pasta, the wet noodle. No, now that you mention it, we haven't gotten many orders for spaghetti lately. Well, the kids come up and say, Yo, dude, we want to ride in one of your boats. That's why I keep them boats out there. Youngsters these days. Darned if I understand them. I'm pretty confused myself. Nick, this isn't going anywhere. This old man is the witness tomorrow, right? We've got to find some way of getting information out of him. My memory's gotten worse of late. That's why I just tell everything important to old Polly here. 
everything important? Hmm, I wonder. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight. All right. Hey, Polly, watch it, will ya? <laughs> See, Nick? All it takes is a little clever thinking. And a criminal mind. Quick, Nick, write that number down. Hey, don't give, get me involved in your little heist crimes. Heist schemes, sorry. <laughs> now listen here, kid. Remember that tricolor pasta we were talking about? Our rainbolioli. I figured out the last color we should use. Indigo blue. Indigo blue? That didn't seem to work the way I thought it might. Hey, Hey, sir, I'm an attorney. Do you care? Oh, that a lawyer's badge? I yes, it is. I don't believe it. This old guy is the first person to recognize my badge. I get it. Huh? Are you? I got you figured out now. You're not Keith. Nick, now's our chance to clear things up. Um, sir. No, I'm not Keith. And I'm not Meg either. We're here investigating a murder that took place on this lake the other night. Please help us. Hmm, a lawyer, huh? Please, mister. All right, I'll help. One, two, two, eight. But on one condition. What's that? When this case is over and done, you'll run the wet noodle. Sure. Okay, we promise. Nick, are you sure about this? Hey, anything to get this case solved. Also, who wouldn't want to eat Phoenix noodles? I guess so. That's my boy. Good for you, Keith. Wait, didn't I just say... You too, Meg. Yes? <laughs> you bring a tear to your old man's eye, you know. Now, what was that you wanted to know? Speak up, Polly. Hello, hello. Uh, now he's talking to the bird again. How do we get him to talk to us? Uh. Fell asleep. Ah, cool. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Maybe I should go and change. Hmm, Detective Gumshoe isn't here. Now that you mention it, didn't he say you had a meeting to go to? Oh, that's right. Let's come back later. Okay, I, I guess I can't uh, change my thing. Looks like Edgeworth isn't questioning. Let's come back later. Guess so. Mm, what about Grossberg? Anything here? Apparently Mr. Grossberg is on vacation today. Well, I guess I can come back tomorrow if I need anything. God, why is my eyebrow itching? I don't get it. No, let me go. Back here? Ah, fresh air. I gotta say, freedom feels great. Behave yourself in the courtroom tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Misbehaving's much more fun. It's not going to be so much fun when Edgeworth refuses to pay your bail again. Right, I'll behave. Oh dear. This is just what to do. Yeah, okay. 
It literally gives me nothing, so. Okay, I guess I gotta talk to this fucking dude some more or something. I don't know. What we got? Uh, camera, autopsy, photo. Uh, yep, I seen this. You know something about this, sir? Case. Yes? It's okay, you can call me dad. Dad, you know something about this? Uh, yep, the other night, out on the lake. Yes, yes? I know all about that, I seen it. What? Tell us, tell us what you saw. Well, I suppose, since you're taking over the shop and all. What you saw? I forget the time, but it was pretty dark outside. Probably night. Uh, yep. It was after midnight, but okay. Then I heard this bang, so I looked outside. Then I heard another one. Bang! A little while later, this boat comes back. Then a young man walked by my window here. He was muttering something to himself. Hey, up. What did he say? Hey, up. I forgot. I'll remember tomorrow by court time, promise. We need to know earlier than that. You know what? Huh? Little Terry was just here. Terry? Hey, yep, that kid next door. You always used to make him cry, remember? He was wearing this tattered old coat. Got himself some whiskers growing out his face. He must be talking about Detective Gumshoe. <laughs> he comes up and tells me to come down to court tomorrow. Really? Somehow I don't think we're going to get much useful information from this guy. Maya, maybe we should be leaving. I think you're right. Oh, wait, I had one more question. Huh? Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Scrack! Don't forget the L6! Scrack! Uh huh? What did you just say, Nick? One more time, Polly. Don't forget the L6! Scrack! <laughs> what? The DL6 incident? Hey, mister, I mean, dad! <laughs> oh, this is getting weird. Who is this old guy? Why would that bird Polly know about the L6? We have to figure out who that old man is. Oh. What? He locked the door from the other side. Who could that old man be? I think I need to do a little more research on this DL6 incident. Maybe I should ask Detective Gumshoe. Now we're talking. <laughs> Sorry. Let's go here. Please, Detective Gumshoe. Yes. Hey, pal. Long time no see. We don't look so happy. What's wrong this time? Actually, we wanted to ask you something. Yeah? You know the boat rental shop down at Gord Lake? Oh, yeah. The old man who runs it is appearing as a witness in court tomorrow, right? <laughs> huh? How'd you- Hmm. That was supposed to be top secret. Do you know who that old man is, detective? Actually, I don't. He's a bit of an odd bird. I haven't been able to get a straight answer out of him. I decided first that he wasn't persuasive enough to stand and testify as a witness. That's why we called Miss Lotta Hart yesterday. As for who he is, I have absolutely no idea. Hmm, sounds suspicious. Detective Gumshoe, please help us. Huh? We need to know about the DL6 incident. That was when Edgeworth's father, father died. I can't help but think that it has something to do with this current case. 
tell the truth, I don't know much about DL6 either. Mr. Edgeworth forbade us from reading the file. So I'm afraid I can't show them to you either, pal. What? However, if you can convince me somehow that the DL6 incident is related to this case, well, I guess I'd consider opening the file up. How can we convince him? Polly. What's that? A parrot? The old man at the boat... Boat rental shop's parrot. The, the parrot knew about that incident. That incident? DL6. What? <laughs> Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? <laughs> Don't forget DL6. <laughs> How is my parrot impression? I feel like that's probably like my best voice so far. <laughs> Huh? I'm pretty sure that old man must have taught her that word. Yeah, but how would that old man know about the DL6 incident? Wait, what if... What if that old man was connected to DL6? Nick, you think he might be... I get you. Sounds like you need information on the DL6 incident. Through there is the station's records room. I'll give you special permission to go in and find what you need. Alright, way to go, Detective Gumshoe. Okay, Nick, to the records room. I guess it's time we faced Edgeworth's past. Let's go! Records room. Sorry, I'm still super late. Fleur! You missed my parrot impression. Well, I guess... Yeah. <laughs> you missed my parrot impression. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Best voice so far, <laughs> in my humble opinion. But thank you for making it. And yeah. Oh, you did. Oh, I'm glad. It's amazing. Thank you. I really worked so hard on it. I've I've been like so excited for Polly and Lotta. Those are like the two <laughs> I've been like really excited for. Uh. Wow. It's amazing, Molly Dusty. Ten years of files and ten years of dust, I guess. Let's find that DL6 stuff, quick! Fifteen years ago, both me and Edgeworth were nine years old. We were almost through with fourth grade when he suddenly transferred. Because of DL6. Nick, I found out where the file is. Oh, thanks. Just let me know what you want to know about the DL6 incident. I'll go get the right file. Alright, well, first I have to get a handle on the main facts, like, a summary. Right. Summary, summary, found it! Here you go! December 28, 2001. It's exactly 15 years ago from the day after tomorrow. So this is in 2016, then. Interesting. So in two days, the case is closed. The incident took place in the elevator of the district courthouse. What? Is this the same district courthouse where we're holding the trial now? Yeah, no, uh, this game, like, the game series starts in, like, 2016. <laughs> Which is really weird, but... Yeah, it came out in 2001, so it, that explains why they have those clunky phones or whatnot. With their tech, look, it looked like 2002. Yeah, but the game came out in 2001, so it... Adds up. <laughs> Looks like it. There was a large earthquake at 2 p.m. on that day. Part of the court building collapsed and all of the lights went out. Wow. That was some earthquake. At the time, three people were trapped in the elevator. It took five hours for them to be rescued. Five hours! That would be scary like that, in the dark. There was a lack of oxygen in the, el in the elevator and the survivors were unconscious. Look at poor little Edgy. I know. So tiny. The survivors? One of the three in the elevator had been shot in the heart. That was Mr. Edgeworth's father, wasn't it? 
He said that his father was shot before his very eyes. So Miles Edgeworth was one of the other passengers in that elevator. What about the victim data? Do you have, have data on the victim, Edgeworth's father? Yeah, hold on. Victim, victim. Here, found it. Gregory Edgeworth, 35, defense attorney. If he were still alive, he'd be 50. He had lost that day's cause in case in court and got in the elevator with his son, Miles. Miles? Miles Edgeworth, of course. So he was in the elevator with his father. From the angle of the, of the bullet, in other evidence, it could not have been a suicide. The murder weapon, a pistol, was found in the elevator. The pistol had been fired two times. Where have I heard that before? Huh. It sounds just like this current case. What's going on here? Got any data on the suspect in there? Hmm, that would be the guy that my mom got arrested. Hold on. This is it. Man arrested as a suspect in DL6 was... Yanni Yogi? He was a clerk in the court, apparently. So he must have been the third person in the elevator. Well, then he had to have done it. But he was found innocent. Thanks to his defense lawyer, Robert Hammond. Hammond, the victim in our case. Right. The suspect, Mr. Yogi, was oxygen deprived so much, uh, so much so he had brain damage. He lost all memory of being in the elevator. After he was declared innocent, he disappeared. Hmm, where could Yogi have gone to, I wonder? He may be closer than we think. I guess I know generally what happened in DL6 now. I still don't know what sort of impact the whole thing had on Edgeworth. Wouldn't Edgy have brain damage too in that case? Not necessarily. I mean, there probably was like a huge chance he had it, but uh, not necessarily. I don't think it's like a given. You know, I just think there was like... Yeah, there was like a chance he would have had brain damage. Fair enough, yeah. <laughs> Nick, are we going to take the whole file? There's too much, we'll never get it out. Y you're right. How about we just take what we think we'll need? Yes. Here we go, let's go. Right, that's probably all we'll be able to find here. Now all that's left is a trial tomorrow. I wonder how dad will do in testifying do testifying in court. is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well, apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here anyway? Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Uh, very well, no opening statement, so... God, sh mm, I hate him so much. You're so annoying. Not so fast, judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. Right, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Karma is the worst. For real. Order! Order! Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Shut it up! Bah! Must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. Right. I call my witness, my decisive witness, to the stand. It's that mysterious boat shop owner. Witness, state your profession. Hmm. <coughs> <coughs> <Hey>, er. <coughs> Ah, 
I am I'm the proprietor of the restaurant, the wet noodle at Gord Lake. And I uh, also rent boats. No, I'm not okay. <laughs> the night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, uh yep. Yep, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. <sighs> I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes. We get it. We get it. You forgot to pee before you entered the courtroom. <laughs> That's just like, I just really gotta pee. This will end in three minutes, okay? I only got three minutes. Three minutes is now. I'm fucking piss myself. <laughs> Stop asking trivial, trivial questions and cooperate. Okay, all right. The witness will state his name. <sighs> oh, well, uh, I'm not really sure. I hope. What do you mean? My, uh, memory. Your Honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. I'm like, two cups of coffee and I'm dying to go. <laughs> Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. Hmm, he can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Let's hear this testimony then, shall we, witness? <laughs> it was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Hurry up. I was in the restaurant where I um, rent boats, as usual. And I heard a bang. Hurry up. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. And I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. <laughs> Shut up! Begin the cross-examination. There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only ten seconds left before our three minutes are up. He just really has to go pee, doesn't he? <laughs> Judge, your verdict, now. Um, uh, yes. M Mr. Wright? I'm gonna cross-examine. I don't care about this fucking... geriatroid on the other side of the courtroom. What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Hmm, very well. You may begin. He just really has to go pee. <laughs> like, for real. This fucking say just like, Hey, sorry, man. Like... <laughs> <laughs> and his tiny bladder. <laughs> From karma and his tiny bladder. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Von Karma. Three minutes just passed. I see. Well, well then, let's just take our time. This is like I fucking peed myself. <laughs> How fucking embarrassing. <laughs> you may cross-examine the witness. I have now peed my pants. <laughs> okay. Night of the 24th, just after midnight. Uh, yep. What are we got, anyways? Mm. Oh, this is the second photo. Never mind. Dum -dum -dum -dum. I was in the restaurant. Okay, where I heard a bang. I looked out the window, saw a boat, the floating, heard another bang. By your window? Yep, by my window. Right outside the window of my little shack. And you could see the man's face. Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. I have a bad feeling about this. Hold 
man was the defendant. I, he said, I can't believe he's dead. Uh, are you sure? Uh oh. The dad! Dead certain, Keith. He said, I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by, too. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him, that Edgeworth boy! Forgot about the dad part. <laughs> I know, right? This case is just like... It's so chaotic, It's it, but it's also like so stressful and just like... <gasps> but it's amazing. This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. From karma. He lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fall. Nick! I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I better act quick, or this trial is going to be over. I will raise an objection. Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Uh, Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun? And the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly. That is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. You're ignoring the truth of the matter here. If you wipe your prints, why would you grab the thing again? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Everything in this witness's testimony is true. Hmm. The judge is lost in thought. What should I do? Raise an objection. I... Your Honor. This witness claims that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead. But his word is all we have. If he were telling a lie. Shut up! Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Apparently you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Oh. Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Are are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. Three minutes was perhaps too high an expect expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough. The witness may leave the stand. Man's just fucking fall asleep. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. I have never held it this long before. <laughs> oh my god. Nor is there any need for, for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? No! Hmm. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The accused will surrender to the court immediately. Be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. This court is adjourned. Wait! Whom's? Who was that just now? Me! Huh? Oh! Larry? <laughs> Larry, goddammit, you fucking scared the living crap out of me. I was like, wait, no, no, this is not supposed to happen. <laughs> what are you doing here? Listen, you gotta listen to me. I, I was... I was there in the park the night of the murder. I, I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But today I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. Remember your motherfucker always. Order. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. I just really have to fucking piss. <laughs> Let me go and take him. One 
one moment, Mr. Von Karma. So did you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did, a gunshot, that night. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony. Then I realized something you said was different from what I remember. A anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's just not right! I'll testify, let me testify! Suck it up, Von Karma. Order! Order! Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. Something. Yeah, I actually read that correctly, okay. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Larry's given us one final chance at this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. She could make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak. Right here, right now. A waste of time. Of course it's a waste of time because you haven't had the chance to fucking prep him. Fucking badass loser. Not as in like a badass, but like he's a bad loser. Poor loser. She, you know what I mean. <laughs> waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. How can it get worse, worse than guilty? Um, death sentence? Which I'm pretty sure is a thing in this universe, so... I feel like I can recall it from... Uh, the investigations... The second investigations game, I believe. In order to make sure no mistake has been make, made, every witness should be heard. What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? Yes, judgey. Yes, throw it down for the judge. <laughs> the court will adjourn for a five minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. <sighs> Indeed, <laughs> that's exactly what I said. I was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Hmm. I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that. Larry was at the lake that night. Yes. He said he was looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he found the balloon and the air tank that night? Yeah. Hey, Edward. Huh? You say something, right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It, it's nothing. Hmm? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. When I fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. When I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me, I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma only has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses. Perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. And she looks like a vampire. Listen, he looks like um, a, a character from Buffy the Vampire Slayer.
He has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. Where are you getting at? It is likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No 10 minute trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was 15 minutes. 15. Everything's on Larry now. Court is now back in session. Witness. Please testify to the court about everything that you saw. On the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you were our last chance. Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about his about this being our big break. Night I was out in the boat on the lake. I was looking for something and I uh, found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock. Then just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked at our lake and didn't see a boat. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order! Order! Well, Mr. Bats. Whoa, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case! Hmm. God, has, has, has Von Karma still not been able to go to the bathroom? My god, you gotta use your brakes, my guy! Like, <laughs> A five minute break. So you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Well, Nick. Hmm. It was pretty wishy washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. I cannot have that small of a matter. <laughs> <coughs> Let me just press all these statements over. Something, something wrong, Mr. Wright. There were so many things wrong that I don't know where to begin. Ah. Um, well, okay. First of all, what time was it? Oh, it was after 11 when I went out in the boat. By that time, everybody, everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you out on the boat at such a late hour? Looking for something? Uh, yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely he was hunting for this gaudy. That's surprisingly close to the truth, in a sense. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. So I quietly slipped the boat, uh, boat back in the red boat. Yep. Around what time was that? Oh, uh, well, let's see. I figure it was, I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12. Yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face. 
But not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. What if Larry was looking for murder? I don't think he would be able to do that. <sighs> it was pretty wishy washy, okay. I guess. Objection. Okay. Wait a sec, Larry. What? You only heard one bang? You're sure? That's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. We both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you've got to treat me nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot. Are you sure? Mm, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Eh? Not sure? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well, uh, I, uh, I might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something... else? My radio, dude, with my headphones. What? Order! Order! And stop that booing! M Mr. Butts! You were listening to the radio with your headphones. Yeah, so what? That a crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion. Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? No, fuck! That's wrong. I think I've heard enough. I think we've all heard enough. What are you thinking, Nick? If you stop now, Mr. Edgeworth will be found guilty. I pressed the wrong button. Carbo looks so pale when it zooms out to show the court. <laughs> he does. We have to turn this trial around now. Uh, Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. <sighs> Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. You can speak for yourself, dummy. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud like... But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. You were listening to your radio. At a high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? 
I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Hi! Thanks for joining. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he, what he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. Sure enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer. The guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is, when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Can't believe I'm continuing this charade. Okay, hold on. Uh, e. I wanna press this. What did she say? God, you're so annoying, Karma. Fuck you. <laughs> Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know if we don't ask, hmm? Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? This one just said, hey, it's almost Christmas. I heard the gunshot. Are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Hmm, maybe Fun Karma was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. There's one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've got to press it until we get to the bottom of what happened. This karma guy looks like the most egotistical guy ever. Pretty much! He's like this- wait, how old is he actually? I never checked. Oh, I can't- Oh, I can't check. That sucks. Sure, I'm that gunshot, sure. Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can. Nah, I can't prove it. But I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know? Hmm. Dear B, no worries. This is... Hey, it's almost Christmas. Feck. That's not it. That's fine, whatever. Objection overruled, we get it. Whoopsies. Do you by any chance remember the name of the program you were listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was how loud was your radio set to that night? <coughs> Listen to it real booming loud, okay, real booming loud? Yeah, you know. And you had headphones on. Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. I'm sure I heard the gunshot. Almost Christmas. Almost Christmas. Just the same way. Turn on the radio. Being alone on Christmas Eve. Right. I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know. I don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve alone. You shouldn't have said anything. 
Okay, then it has to be... It's almost Christmas. Yes, it's the same. Okay, cool. Huh. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, and Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When you heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve! That would seem to be the case, yes. But that contradicts the two testimonies we have heard so far, Your Honor. Both Miss Hart and the old man said it was after midnight when they heard the shots. Yas! <laughs> In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Order! Order! What does it- what does this mean? Two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Back. Welcome back, yeah. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright. What do you think about Mr. Butts' claim he heard the gunshots before midnight? Larry's right. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. This. Look at this photograph. <laughs> this was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. Oh? Hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. This is this playing in my head every time. Save. What do you mean, Your Honor? This photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that that is the case. Then where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered at 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Why would this be? Shut up! Don't be fooled, Judge. The camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes. There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed, triggering the camera. Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear! Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. <laughs> and he was fired three times, so. This is my evidence. That murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When then, 
with the last shot fired. Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot, the shot Larry heard just before midnight. <clears throat> order! Order! Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you? Why? Uh-oh, I better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes? Oh! What's wrong, Nick? I have it. I have it! Huh? Remember the case with the steel samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya! Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm going to run with it. Right. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten the guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. Testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? So you finally realized the truth. There can be no other murderer than here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Shooting. I can't think. Listen, Rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on the lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant Edgeworth and the victim Robert Hammond were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on the boat. I admit it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 12.15, but Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot in the lake. It's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain the two men on the boat to me. Uh, it's a ba -da -ba -do -ba -do. Edgeworth and the murderer. Of course it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that way, but well... That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Right. It's... Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. Y you don't know? Blah. Again, you waste my time. I don't know, because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop. That old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not on the boat? What? Well then, where did the murder take place? Show the judge where the murder really took place. Dang it, I thought it was a parrot. Yeah, for sure. Take that. Here's the 
here, of course. The boat shop, where he lives. That way he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Shut up. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That night he was out on the lake in a boat searching for something. He finds it and returns to returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's co coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol in the boat, Mr. Wright? The boat shop caretaker. Of course it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes. Why would he shoot twice if it didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed. Miss Hart did exactly that after her hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits for a bit and he fires again. Then... The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see. So someone looking from the edge of the lake. It would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice, to draw attention to the boat. Huh. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body. And threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Bailiff! Bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly. Ugh. Phoenix, you become a de detective. Nah. He is much more suited as a lawyer. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishing, bleh, astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. <laughs> to be fair, you cannot scream objection as a detective. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Your Honor, sir! Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. 
The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? Find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. Huh. Goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. Huh. <laughs> Yay, Nick! You did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure. Once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the vi wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on the trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile, just a little. Relax. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now, and I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... Can't make up my mind. It looks so sad. <laughs> what is this about, Ashworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. And on to the next chapter we go! Yes! How many chapters has this been? It's day three investigation, so it's been like day one investigation, day one trial. Or day, day two trial, I guess. And then day two investigation, day two trial. So this is like the fifth chapter then. God, and okay, I spent like a little under an hour per Per chapter, I guess. Huh. What was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? Memory of a crime that I committed. Memory of murder. Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him recently. But it never takes someone's life. Never. Nick. Yo, how's everyone doing? Maybe he turned vegan and ate a burger? <laughs> Flora, please. <laughs> the music. Oh, the music in this game is phenomenal. What's everyone doing? What do you think of my performance today? I had him swimming in the aisles, huh, Maya? Swimming? Me? Oh, uh, yes. I do remember feeling faint. Right on. Tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Sir? Sir? She's 17? She's... 17? She's 17? She's... And you are 23! Right, Nick? Uh-huh, me? 
I, uh, well, maybe my heart skipped a beat or two. I think you can do better than that. Come on, I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy! You guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow before your hero. Maybe she had her birthday and didn't update. No. <laughs> They're pretty like consistent with their with their ages and stuff. So uh, no, she is still seventeen. God, I have to talk to you. Larry, you really helped out in the trial today. You did! If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. <laughs> but seriously, Nick. That boat shop caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Larry's just being a creep. He always is. He just doesn't think. Ever. <laughs> Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know. From where I was sitting, it just seemed pretty... edgy. I mean, can you really know he's telling the truth about that night? Nick? I don't know. But what I do know is... I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and... Who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me? B but why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah, why me, Nick? Hm. Huh. Enough with the silent treatment. Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a jerk, don't you think? You didn't know him back then. Back when he wanted to become a defense attorney. Wait, was that when you two were classmates? Yes, in grade school. They saved me. Miles and Larry. They saved me, and I'll never forget it. It's called an introvert Maya. <laughs> That's why I became a defense attorney, you know. What? Hey, hey Larry, what's he talking about? Huh? Oh, um, uh... Uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. Huh. Okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear this story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was the very end of third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A class trial? You remember, Larry? Spring, end of third grade? A kid in our class got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for, l for lunch from home. Huh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared with $38 still inside. Oh, yeah, now that you mention it, I do remember that. I can see why you'd forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, the envelope had been stolen during PE class. I was coming down with a cold, so I'd skip PE that day. I was the only one not in class. So, they thought you did it? Yeah, the kids in class said it should be put on trial. Trial? So the next day we had a classroom trial, with me as the defendant. I- I didn't do it! Guilty! He did it! Guilty! It was you! Thief! Give the money back! You're such a meanie! No one played with him! Just admit you did it! You can't handle the truth! Tell us the truth! We're not gonna play with you anymore! Yeah, no prowling my eraser! It shouldn't be allowed to relay late race! Give me back my 50 cents I loan you! Now, Phoenix, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. It's not right. In the end, even the teacher thought I'd done it. Perfect voice acting. <laughs> Thank you. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I... I didn't know what was happening. I was so sad. I couldn't stop crying. I thought it was the past. Sorry, I'm dumb. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money had been stolen was sitting. 
That's when it happened. Objection! He shouldn't have to apologize. The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence. Anything else has no place. You should all be ashamed. Amateurs. M Miles? It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? <laughs> Why am I... <laughs> What is this voice? No! Then you shouldn't apologize! Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof. Oh god, his hands fucking yaoi hands on children! <laughs> Get this out of my sight! Ah! That is why, Your Honor, this boy is innocent! B but Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it! He's the one! We don't need proof! Make him say sorry! Why don't you all just shut up? This is always how it's how it, how it is. Everybody is ganging up and picking on one person. Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. Very well. I will replace the money myself. This class trial is over. That's how it happens. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. Wow, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone, without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Um, yeah, well, I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. So it took it kind of personally, see? If something smells, it's usually the butts. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after the, that class trial. That's when I heard his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney. Just like my father. A famous defense attorney. A few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably had to do with his father's death. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edgeworth's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of a Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him. I don't know how many times. He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he had become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? If I was a defense attorney, I knew he'd have to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. Edgeworth believed in me, and I believe in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. Well, Gumshoe is. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. And gum Gumshoe, too. You're, you're, you're forgetting it. <laughs> the ship has sailed by <laughs> mm. I'm the only one who can help him. Whoa, Nick. So, is that why you helped me out for free? Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. Except I don't remember saying I do it for free. Oh, Nick. Nick. Nick, we have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Hi, Mom. Thank you for dropping by. Right. It very well may be. First, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'd settle for who. I guess I can clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. Cool. Let's go. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Hey, pal. 
Long time no see. Oh, Detective Gumshoe. Close one today, huh? I got so worked up, I snapped my tie in half. Uh, sorry about that. No problem, pal. Thanks to you, we now know who really did it. You mean the boat shop caretaker? Look, I'll make you a promise. I'll have that scoundrel in my custody by trial time tomorrow. Come what may, it's my duty to you as a police officer. Now I'm off to catch me a criminal. Detective Gumshoe sure is active today. Oh, one other thing. Eh! No one can go into the woods today. The woods? Where Lotta was camping? The woods are off limits to camping and apparently the park ranger found out. He got pretty mad. No one can go in for a while. I guess Lotta's in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Steel eyesore is missing. Eyesore? Looks like the hot dog stand is closed too. Can you turn down the text sound? Sure can. Hope this is a bit better. Is that better? I guess Larry's too busy worrying about Mr. Edgeworth to show up for work. Okay, uh, let's go to the boat renter shop, I guess. Yeah, okay, cool. The old caretaker got away. Yep. I never imagined he might be the real murderer. Ahem. <laughs> I'd know that clearing of the throat anywhere. Ah, oh, hello. What might you be doing here? Out for a walk, hmm? Ah, oh, the days of my youth. Like the scent of fresh lemon. Mr. Grossberg, this is no time for idle reminiscing. Mr. Edgeworth's trial ends tomorrow. Oh, uh, that is true, yes. But from what I saw of today's trial, Edgeworth should be fine, right? Well, well, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, I'm not sure. Hmm. If you find anything out, come by my office at once. I may be able to offer you some assistance. Thanks. Bye. What do you think Mr. Grossberg was doing here anyway? Who knows? Can I go into the shack? I sure can. Nobody's home. Hello! Hello! Squawk! <laughs> hey, it's Polly! I wonder where, you, where your owner's gone, Polly. Hello! Hello! Squawk! I can't believe he'd run off and leave his poor parrot to fend for him herself. Hello, hello, Squawk! I love the parrot voice. <laughs> Maybe I should take care of Polly, Nick. You probably shouldn't. Just kidnap her. The police know about her anyway. I'm sure they'll do something. Well, okay. Sorry, Polly. Says I can't take you. Now the bird's going to hate me. That reminds me, Nick. Polly here knows the number to the safe, right? Yeah, that's right. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight. Shrrr. Let's open it, Nick. Come on. I'm sure there isn't any money in there. Aww. Hey, he keeps it locked, right? So there must be something of value in there. Not so sure. Okay, Nick. Let's see what's in there. I guess there might be a clue or two. The only thing in here is a letter. A letter? Aw, oh, boring. Hmm, there's no name or signature on this thing. It's handwritten in very precise, clear letters. Take your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Edgeworth! Nick! Why would Mr. Edgeworth's name be on here? How should I know? I'm going to read the whole thing. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. It also says this is your last chance. Now's the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. 
the rest of the letter goes on to describe the murder plot in detail. How to kill Robert Hammond and frame Edgeworth. Calling Edgeworth out to the lake, getting on the boat, firing twice. This is exactly what I figured out today in court. It's all here, in perfect detail. What do you think it means, Nick? I don't know, but it looks like these are instructions for that caretaker. When he killed Robert Hammond and called out Edgeworth, he was following instructions. And who could have written that letter? And what does it mean to get revenge on Miles Edgeworth? Look, I don't know, okay? But one thing's for certain. This letter has an amazing clue. Alright, let's go. Go where? I have no fucking clue. Uh, Essential Center? Oh, there you are. You look as grim as always. Hmm. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, I heard the story about the class trial. Class trial? What do you mean? You don't remember? No, I don't. Your lunch money was stolen, wasn't it? In third grade? Lunch money? Oh, all oh right. Yes, I seem to remember something like that. Nick, I think you're the only one who really remembers. Well, it probably only really mattered to me anyway. Mr. Edgeworth, didn't you know? That trial was the reason Nick became a defense attorney. Ridiculous. Gee, thanks. That said, it does sound like the kind of thing you'd do. You haven't changed a bit, have you, right? So simple. To a fault, even. Well, maybe, yeah, but... I think you've changed too much, Edgeworth. Perhaps. My prosecutor. Hey, Edgeworth. Why did you become a prosecutor, anyway? You used to look up to your dad, and you said you wanted to be a defense attorney, right? I couldn't let myself deny reality like you. What do you mean? My father was taken from me, and you want me to defend criminals? I'm sorry, right, but I'm not that good of a person. One suspect was apprehended in your father's murder, right? Yes, the man trapped in the elevator with my father. His name was Yanni Yogi. He had to be the shooter, any way you look at it. Yet, he was found innocent. The defense attorney got him off the hook. That would be Robert Hammond. On that day, 15 years ago, Three of us were trapped in that elevator for five hours. When we were rescued, we all suffered oxygen deprivation. We had lost. Damn that lore we getting. Oh, we getting that lore. I had lost all memory of the murder. Lost your memory? Even now, I can't recall what happened in that elevator. That was the crux of Yogi's attorney's argument in court. He claimed young Yogi had been not of sound mind due to the oxygen deprivation. Yogi was released due to a lack of evidence. Innocent. I have to go. See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye, Mom. Thanks for dropping by for a little while. That's when I changed my mind. I started to hate defense attorneys. What's your relationship with Von Karma? He's my teacher and a man who deserves respect. I learned everything I know of of courtroom techniques from him. So, he's like my sister was to you, Nick. He's a perfectionist in all things. In court, in his personal life, he also has his really small bladder. <laughs> he has to pee every three minutes. <laughs> He is obsessed with doing everything perfectly. Perfectly, huh? In all the cases he has taken on, <laughs> none were left unsolved. And not one suspect was declared innocent, ever. But... But that's... I know. It's possible some of the suspects were indeed innocent. However, it is impossible for us to accurately determine that in every case. All Funkano does is his job. To find the suspect guilty perfectly. In any case, 
It's nigh well impossible to find a weakness in him. Should a weakness appear, he would do anything in his power to make it go away. Um, Edgeworth? What you're saying is true. You're headed for a guilty sentence tomorrow. He's right! Now's no time to praise the enemy, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm. It's a strange situation in which I find myself, I'll admit. No kidding. Edgeworth, see this letter? Hmm. This came out of the safe in the shack where that boat rental caretaker lives. I see. Revenge? On me? Who is that old guy anyway? I... I don't know. Could he be an innocent defendant who got declared guilty or something? Nice, right? But I don't remember that old man. Not at all. So, he was following this letter then. Which means there was someone else behind it. Now is the time to get revenge on the two men who ruined your life. Two men? Meaning myself and Robert Hammond. He also says this is your last chance. Last chance. Wait, maybe. Maybe he's talking about the statute of limitations on the DL6 incident. Wait. Wait. That old man. What is it? Do you know who he is? Yogi. Could he be Yogi? Y Yogi? The suspect in the DL6 incident. The one who was found innocent. to me about Yan Yogi. Yan Yogi was a court bailiff at the time. We just happened to be in the elevator together 15 years ago. The quake was incredibly strong. Before I knew it, everything was dark. We were there for so long, it felt like forever. The air thinned, and the darkness closed in on us in that little box. We became unsettled. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet! I said quiet! You're not making this any easier. I want to get out! Help! Get us out! Don't shout! You'll just use up more oxygen! That's all I remember. When I came to, I was in a hospital bed. Staring up at the ceiling. In court, Yana Yogi's mental condition was called into question. They claimed the oxygen deprivation and stress had caused temporary insanity. In the end, the claim passed the court and Yogi was found innocent. Huh, but isn't that strange? This letter tells him to get revenge on Edgeworth. Why would he want to take revenge on you? Right. Yeah? There's something that's been troubling me this last few days. I didn't know whether or not I should tell you. You mean the nightmare? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. I think, I think the time has come to tell all. For the last 15 years, I've had the same dream almost every night. I wake up in a fearful sweat every time. What kind of dream? It's a dream about my father's killing in the dark. Help, I can't breathe. But I can't breathe. Why is it quiet? You're making this any easier. I want to get out. Help, get us out. Don't tell you. Just use up more oxygen. I've already been through this. I can't breathe! You- you're using up my air! What? Stop breathing my air! I'll- I'll stop you! What are you- Stop breathing my air! No, father! He's attacking father. Then I see the pistol lying by my feet. I don't know if it was evidence from that day in court or the bailiffs. In a daze, I pick it up- I pick up the pistol. Get away! Get away from my father! Whoa. 
sad. So sad. And with that scream, I wake. It's a bone chilling scream. Oh, thank you so much for the follow, Professor Pecan. A scream that has rung in my ears for the past 15 years. But that's just a dream, right? Right? That thought is the only thing that has kept me sane for the last 15 years. But what if I'm wrong? What if it's real? They say that sometimes people shut out memories and self-defense. Maybe it was I who killed my father. What? If you think about it that way, this letter makes sense. Get your revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Think about it. Yogi was really innocent. That's why he wanted revenge against me. Miles, fun fact, I think I killed my dad. Phoenix, fun fact, shut up, you beautiful man. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Wait, Edgeworth, you... You mean... It was me. I was a true criminal of DL6. I shot my father. This is bad. What are we going to do, Nick? What can we do? I don't know. I don't think there is anything we can do, like it or not. If there's someone else who knows a lot about the DL6 incident, maybe. There is, Nick! There is someone else who knows about DL6! What is drink is a milk? <laughs> oh, well, how could that nine year old throw a gun hard enough for the trigger to go off? Yeah, that's al always like been like really s like weird to me. Strong boy, it's his yaoi hands, okay? <laughs> Very strong. Um. Can I show him the parrot? No, I can't. <laughs> That's why he's so bulky. Mm. Of course. Look at those broad shoulders. Yeah. Um. Oh god, what was like... I followed the Gaston Dionysi. <laughs> My god. Wait, I don't even know where I'm supposed to go now. Hmm, looks like Detective Gumshoe hasn't gotten back yet. Gumshoe, he won't be coming back today. Oh, really? He said there was some guy he had to arrest by tomorrow. The boat shop caretaker. He shouted something about catching him if, the, if, it's, if it's the last thing I do, pal. Good luck, Gumshoe. I guess I'll uh, have to go to somewhere. Nothing here. Anything in here? I doubt it. Pog for gum <laughs> Also, I have played this before, so I know what's happening, but like, I would like prefer not to have anything spoiled anyways. I just wanted to play the games all over again. <laughs> One day left, Nick. Yeah, I know. Well, no time to waste. Let's get going. Let's get going where? <laughs> Give Gumshoe a raise. <laughs> Oh man, he deserves a raise. Heck yeah. Nick, no! <laughs> I was thinking like... <laughs> That's a photo of his, of his father, don't show him that! <laughs> You're right! <laughs> Now probably is a good time to dredge up those memories. Hey, so your father, do you want to see a picture of him dead? <laughs> what is it? Um, nothing. <laughs> she screams in front of him. Oh my god. Ah, oh, god, it bothers my ears. Hey, here's a picture of your dead dad. <laughs> It 
It was your fault. <laughs> this must be the chief of detectives. This goes to his computer screen. It's not possible. The world ended yesterday? He must be reading predictions for the future on someone's homepage. Cool, there's nothing here. <laughs> What's your awful Miles? Miles incoherent sobbing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I have to go somewhere, <laughs> but where? But if Miles is sobbing, uh, that gives Phoenix the perfect cover to comfort him. Win win! I mean, <laughs> you're not wrong! <laughs> Next stop, it goes, hey, sorry. <laughs> yep. Okay, I'm gonna go inside here and, um... Though I guess this music technically means I'm like finished here or whatever. I'm gonna go to sleep. Okay! Good night, Jan. Doesn't look like he used his kitchen much. You're right. I guess the whole pasta restaurant thing was a lie. What, you thought he was telling the truth? Hmm, everything's cold. Looks like he didn't turn his heater on. Nick just stares at Edgeworth's face. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> Listen, in the in the in the later games, they're they they just for sure are married. It's it's wonderful, truly. <laughs> I guess he hasn't been back here since the trial. You think? Uh what's wrong? Huh? Oh, never mind. What? Tell me. Just when I saw the TV, I remembered. They're showing a pink princess special this week. Oh. See? That's why I didn't want to tell you. Say, Nick. Don't people usually put f pictures of fish up on the wall to boast about them? Uh, yeah, I guess so. You mean pictures of the fish they caught, right? Right! But don't all the fish on the wall here look really puny to you? Well, you know what they say. You should have seen the one that got away. Imagine the courtroom drama. The prosecutor and defense were married. I would so play like it. It's Ace Attorney. It's literally Ace Attorney. I don't understand what you mean, Nick. 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 <laughs> oh, sorry. I was busy staring into the hands on man's eyes. Yeah. But the one that got away from us was the caretaker, and we did see him. I, mean, I feel like we're having two different conversations here. Yeah. It just. <laughs> This handsome man. I, <laughs> there's some boats floating up at the dock. The murder took place in a boat from this dock. Apparently, the police took away the actual boat that was used that night. Indeed, there's space for one more boat at the dock. Judge, could the prosecution stop flirting with the defense for five minutes? No, but like, isn't that like a, a, a meme or something? Especially when we get to like the fourth game in the main series, not gonna like say anything about it or anything, but like when we get to like the fourth game in the main series. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm currently replaying that game and it's, 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 it's great. And there are like some like, uh, references one is to fucking uh f what's it called um cocaine <laughs> uh, space one moment yeah we okay, can't read that and the other one is to what was it something else oh yeah uh i guess they kind of pedophilia in a way it's really weird <laughs> forest here beyond these bushes. Nick, the forest! There's someone in there! You're right, there's a few policemen in there. They must be looking for the caretaker. Good luck. I 
get a winter's chill from the bare leaf trees today. Huh, <sighs> what is it about winter that turns people into poets? From karma. <laughs> Kisses and smiles everyone else. Oh, from karma. Stand back, I think I'm gonna vomit. Oh my god, yes, that meme. <laughs> Also starting to film now. Yeah, I already read this before, I'm pretty sure. Where the hell am I supposed to go? Maya, that's because you wear sandals. Oh my god, I didn't even think about that. I must be one of the detectives and mumbling something to himself. Please think about what you're doing, Jolinda. Don't take my tummy away from me, no. You must be doing image training for a nasty divorce argument. He's at a detective's desk. I don't, I don't know. It sounded more like he was watching soaps. <laughs> These are the detective's desk. And computers and files on each one. Funny. They're a lot tidier than I'd expect. I guess the detectives don't spend a lot of time at their desks. It's a police department's mascot. He's a blue badger. It was my idea. I made him as my mascot. That's nice. I already read this earlier. This stream. case when when von karma is like oh, you have three minutes this this case will end or this court will end in three minutes and i was like he just really gotta pee doesn't he <laughs> three minutes that's all i can that's all i can hold out i can only hold up for like three more minutes until then <sighs> this has to end in three minutes <laughs> this kind of Worries me in a way, a poster of a female police officer. Wait, no, that's the latest babes in uniform calendar. My bad. Phoenix, do I want to know how you know? <laughs> because... <laughs> what? <laughs> Whoa there. I think my was featured. <laughs> babes? Babes in uniform? <laughs> Damn. Oh god, what a... You know what? I'm just gonna fucking show him like everything. Oh, DL6. It was that case that changed my life. It was that case that changed my life. And tomorrow, on December 28th, the statute of limitations runs out. Tomorrow, could that be a coincidence? But even if the case is finally closed on paper, it will never be erased from my memory. Never. Well, of course not! You witnessed your own father die! Poor Mr. Edgeworth. Metal detector. Listen, I'm I'm just I'm just spitballing here. Like I don't care. No, I already tried the bullet. Edgy needs a hug. Oh. Everyone in this fucking game needs a hug, to be honest. What are you showing me this picture for? Um, uh, no reason. You know, I was impressed by your deduction in the trial today. Granted, you were at the end of your rope, but still. Nick, he noticed. Okay. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> I already Senpai noticed you. It will. I mean I pretty much like showed him everything I have, right? And I can't get into the Wild Guitar Riff. Gee, I wonder, is that a reference? <laughs> okay, I've shown him literally everything I have. Grossberg, fuck! I forgot about Grossberg! 
Mr. Grossberg. Oh, hello there. What's wrong? You look troubled. No kidding. I can't believe you're not. My, my, my. Just calm down and tell me what's happened, hmm? It's... Mr. Edgeworth, he... I see. So, Edgeworth dreamt he shot his own father. Slap. Get yourself together. It's only a dream. Only a dream. My god, y'all are fucking just roleplaying in my, in my chat. Uh, get it together, my angry. Has fun on trial. Oh my god, y'all are killing me. I love the voice impressions. Oh, hi, Colin. Thank you for dropping by. Really appreciate it. I wonder. Uh, what? If that's the case, then why do you two look so troubled, hmm? Well, also consider this. Yogi quite certainly holds a, a deep gr grudge against Miles Edgeworth. Miles doesn't really like you, Maya. I mean... I don't think he... I, I think he's kind of neutral at the moment. <laughs> so deep, he'd want to frame him for murder. This leads me to surmise that Mr. Edgeworth's dream was not a dream. It was real. As you imagined. Tolerates? <laughs> okay. Let's say tolerates. Miles Edgeworth threw the pistol to save his father. The pistol fired. And the deed was done. I still don't know how that works, but you know what? I'm not gonna question it because we never get it. We never get an answer, so whatever. No! I don't believe it! Yogi was suspected of murder and his career was a, as a bailiff was irrevocably wrecked. There is a trigger. Yeah! I don't know. Hmm. Thus he sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. Oh my god! <sighs> Oi! I can uh, see some... Uh, something I don't like in there, unfortunately. Did you call him daddy? No, 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 no. But this is, sorry dude, this is uh, kind of um, spoiler territory. There are some more spoilery nicknames in there, I'm sorry. But no, it's not, it's not Edgeworth that calls him daddy, unfortunately. Hmm. I just sought revenge on Miles Edgeworth. This was his last chance, of course, with the statute of limitations so close. Darn it. Okay, Gregory Edgeworth. What do you know about Edgeworth's father? He was a defense attorney without peer. It sounds trite, but it's true. Well, he may have had one peer now that I think about it. Your mentor, Maya F Mia Fey. My sister? Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques. What is happening with my hair? My hair just doesn't want to. Whatever, you know what? Screw it. Gregory Edgeworth was very disapproving of Mr. Von Karma's techniques, yes. That's no surprise. Von Karma is an extreme man. Uh, forged, testi it, it forged testimonies and evidence are nothing to him. The result he has... The result. He has a perfect win record in court. To beat him, Gregory Edgeworth tried to call attention to his methods. And he lost. And died in despair, as it were. I see. When Gregory Edgeworth was killed, the police called on a spirit medium. That was your mother, Misty Fay. 
I'm Gregory Edgeworth. I have been killed. The one who shot me was the bailiff, Yanni Yogi. But you're not right either. Yet Yogi was found innocent. <laughs> There's so much happening in the chat right now. <laughs> That's when my mother left us. Everyone called her a fraud. That's right. Everyone thought she was, you see. Yet, now that I think about it, it seems the one who lied was Gregory Edgeworth's ghost. Gregory Edgeworth must have known who shot him. I don't believe it. So you're saying he falsified his testimony? That Edgeworth's dad lied to protect his son? It's only a possibility, mind you. But a possibility nonetheless. go to here now? Nope. Back to Girls Brooks, I guess. Oh! BRB, no worries. So this is the letter. It does seem that Yogi was following this letter when he killed Hammond. But why kill Robert Hammond? Hobo Phoenix. Hey, yo! I don't think so. Sorry. <laughs> but why kill Robert Hammond? Hammond was a skilled defense attorney. But he defended clients not for their sake, but for his own. Huh? His own sake? He never trusted his clients, that one. The only thing he trusted was his own ability. No, 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 I mean spoilers! <laughs> spoilers for future games. I don't want that in my uh, chat, sorry. But he got his clients found innocent, so why should it matter? Actually, my dear, it's quite different. He won that innocent verdict for no one but himself. Yogi was a free man, but socially he was ruined. Huh? You'll understand, soon enough. Wait. What is it? This letter. I've seen this handwriting somewhere before. A long time ago. Whose handwriting was this? Do you have any idea who wrote this? Oh, Von Karma. Could it be Manfred Von Karma? Von Karma? Why would he have something to do with this? Um, well, I'm not sure. Hmm? Von Karma. Von Karma. Wait, you're right, my boy. This is Von Karma's handwriting. I'm sure of it. I used to see it all the time on court reports. What? But that means th the one who, th who told Mr. Yogi to kill was... Correct. Manfred von Karma himself. What does this mean then? Why would von Karma want to frame Edgeworth? If it truly was von Karma who wrote this letter, then he would know the truth. He would know that Miles Edgeworth had accidentally killed his own father. I'll say as much tomorrow in court, I should think. You'll press the point until the court finds Miles finds Miles Edgeworth guilty. Oh no. But how could Von Karma know about Mr. Edgeworth's past like that? Even Mr. Edgeworth thought it was just a nightmare. Hmm, that I do not know. Yet I do know that Von Karma is both persistent and a perfectionist. Maybe seeking to satisfy a grudge against Gregory Edgeworth by hurting his son. What do you mean? It was 15 years ago. Von Karma met Gregory Edgeworth in court. And Von Karma did win, but he didn't make it through the trial and scarred. What happened in the trial between Edgeworth's dad and Von Karma? Von Karma got the guilty verdict he wanted. He won the trial. 
of Gregory Edgeworth accused von Karma of faulty evidence. And though he lost the trial, Mr. Edgeworth's accusation stood. Faulty evidence? It was the only penalty von Karma has ever received in his career as a prosecutor. Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. A vacation? Yes, an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. Really? He doesn't take vacations? Like, go to the sea or uh, to the mountains? Don't tell me he's never been to Europe. You have strange ideas about vacations, Maya. In any case, that was the only time he took a vacation from work. I believe the penalty upset him quite a lot. Odd. If he wanted to keep a perfect record so badly, why would he take such a long vacation? What do we do, Nick? Von Karma is going to bring up the L6. You can bet on it. What if Mr. Edgeworth pleads guilty to the to L6? I won't let him. Um, yes, Mr. Wright. I hate to say this, but even accidental murder is murder, you know. I know that. I... I believe it's manslaughter, isn't it? No, that's not it. Yo, oh, yeah, that's... He was nine. Yeah, that too. Isn't it manslaughter if you, like, you kill someone when your intent is not to kill them? Something like that. I don't know. I'm just a lawyer in a game. I don't know anything about law <laughs> outside of this game. I, I just believe in Edgeworth's innocence. I can't believe he'd kill someone. But, but Nick, Mr. Edgeworth admits it himself. His father must have lied to protect him from beyond the grave. I don't care. I know he's not guilty. Mr. Wright. Yeah, murder is plutter. Pl pl plutter? <laughs> murder is plutter. <laughs> murder is plotted. Manslaughter is... <laughs> accident? Why in, why in the quotation marks? Mr. Wright. If you say so, I suppose I could go check again. The police files might hold something of interest. Mr. Grossberg. Thank you. I can't promise anything. In fact, I think the chances of finding something are slim. I understand. The police materials. Hmm. Okay, now. Can we please go? There's hardly anyone here. Everyone must be out looking for the old guy, Yogi. Ah, well, it's you. I don't think Gumshoe will be coming back today. He's staying out late looking for someone. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is pounding the pavement for real. Um, we were wondering if we could check out the records room again. Well, now, I can't have just anyone wandering around in there. But I guess Mr. Von Karma isn't there now anyway. You can go in as long as he's there. Von Karma? Yes, he just arrived, actually. Von Karma's in the records room. Nick, let's hurry! Dusty as always. We were only here just yesterday. I'm sure they just haven't had time to clean. What's wrong, Nick? Nothing. I was just noticing that he isn't here. On Karma. This is open. This cabinet is where they keep evidence for current cases. Some of the things are obviously murder weapons. Others are question marks. Most of it just looks like random junk. Nick, what do you think this clothespin is for? Don't touch that. It's evidence. Oh, I thought... Apparently, that didn't count. <laughs> okay. Huh? One of the drawers here is open. Someone must have been looking in it recently. The label says unsolved cases. Evidence. Hmm. Unsolved cases. I know I clicked the drawer. <laughs> that was the weirdest thing. Nick, the file for DL6. It's completely empty. What? What are you doing in here? Ah! Von Karma! You. How do you know my name? Huh? Have we met? 
What are you saying? We see each other every day, don't we? We're Miles Edgeworth's defense team. Defense team? Um, I beg your pardon. You see, I rarely remember defense attorneys. They are like bugs to me. Needless things to be crushed. I can see how this guy was Edgeworth's mentor. Uh, um, Mr. Edgeworth is your student, right? I said that really weird. I'm sorry, I can't really hear myself properly. So he is... He has dementia. And <laughs> tiny bladder. <laughs> oh my god. Yep, pretty much. A romanticist who still can't shed the, that veneer of amateurism. I thought that said... I thought that said autism! <laughs> Just like his father, always second rate. M Mr. Von Karma, you had an axe to grind with Mr. Gregory Edgeworth, didn't you? Me? A grudge against the ma'am defense attorney. Why? Autistic. <laughs> well, in my defense, I actually am autistic. <laughs> I was looking at his face, curvy. Definitely scurvy. Ah, yes. Because it dealt a blow to your otherwise perfect trial record. So you did, but what I don't get is, why did you take his son under your wing afterwards? The son of your most bitter rival? That, my dear attorney, is none of your business. Tomorrow will be the last day of this trial. It's been a while since I've had a defense attorney last this long. Still, you will lose in the end. Miles Edgeworth will admit his own guilt. His guilt of 15 years ago, you mean. You're quite the researcher. If you've done your homework so well, then certainly you must understand. You know what Miles Edgeworth will tell the court tomorrow. Right. So from Karma is going to bring up the L6 in court tomorrow. Nine doesn't count. Yeah, exactly. What is this? Mr. Von Karma, have a look at this. This was you, wasn't it? You instructed Yanni Yogi to commit murder. Yanni Yogi? How many years has it been since I've heard him called by that name? He's a fool. I told him to burn it after he read it. So you admit it. <laughs> you stupid fool, I have to do it. I'm sorry. I have to do it to continue the, the, the game. You you wrote Mr. Yogi this letter. Yes, my dear defense attorney. Thank you for taking the trouble to bring it to me. You've saved me from a lot of needless hassle. What? Nick, what is that thing? Is it with a fucking taser? He's like, move over, bitch. I gotta go pee. <laughs> a stun gun for self defense, usually. Indeed. 600,000 volts will course through your body like a dog touching an electric fence. 600,000. Oh, don't worry. People don't die from it, usually. No, give me the letter. No. Whoa, what are you- Nick, run! Ah! Maya! Out of my way! Ah! Oh, he's got us. The letter's gone, of course. I had a cup of tea and I really need to go! <laughs> <laughs> I 
And he took the deal, six evidence, all of it. Oh, the rest, you mean. I'm dumb. I was like, huh? Back to having no clues. Wait, Maya jumped first. Maya, is she okay? Ma Maya! Maya, open your eyes! Maya! The letter! Did he take it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, are you okay? I, I couldn't stop him. I jumped as fast as I could, but one shot from that thing knocked me out cold. I'm useless. I'm no good as a lawyer or a medium. I can't even call my sister. Not even now. When we need her the most. Maya, please. I wish I hadn't woken up at all. Maya, please! Maya! Oh, there has to be some way I can help her. I better do something about her self-confidence first. Maya. She's holding something. What is that? A bullet? DL6 incident, evidence number 7. Taken from the heart of Gregory Edgeworth. I remember. Von Karma was holding this when Maya jumped him. <laughs> I'm just shocked at what do you expect to do against electricity? Listen. <laughs> she grew up in a village. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, still bears clear ballistic markings. Love that. Prove it to you, Maya. You're most definitely not useless. I'll prove it to you in court tomorrow. So chapter six is a go. Yes. This is it. Judgment day. Today, things are going to get settled at last. A lot of things. Uah! What's the big idea? Sorry, Nick. I only touched your shoulder. I guess the shock hasn't worn off from my run-in with the stun gun yesterday. Anyhow, today's the last day of the trial. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Maya. Edgeworth is looking glum as always. Hope von Karma doesn't push him too hard. Ugh. What are you doing? Sorry, I'm sorry. I just thought I'd cheer you up with a pat on the back. Maya, maybe you should go outside and discharge. Right, good idea. Try not to electrocute anyone on your way out. Whoa, yeah, pal. gotten into that girl. Detective Gumshoe! Morning, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, good morning. How did it go, Detective? Have no fear. As promised, I've captured our runaway caretaker. I just brought him in and took all night, pal. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. You must be tired. Actually, after that shock, I got on the way in. I feel pretty good. Yogi says he's forgotten his own name. But that has to be a lie. Why would he want revenge on Edgeworth if he couldn't remember his past? He does remember, and I'm going to prove it. Court is now in session for the trial of Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready. Uh, ah, right. Very well. We have reached the final day of our proceedings in this trial. I ask that the prosecution submit decisive evidence. Understood. Come on. Don't be awed into silence by every little thing he says. Very well, Mr. Von Karma. Your opening statement. Right. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe's efforts, the both rental shop caretaker has been arrested. In yesterday's trial, the defense asserted that the caretaker was the murderer. However, 
caretaker has yet to confirm this. I would like to ask the defense to cross-examine him as much as necessary. Very well. Please bring the witness into the courtroom. Ladies and gentlemen of the court, I believe you all remember our witness. He was in the boat rental shop on the lake from where he witnessed the accident. In addition, he has currently lost memory of his name and identity. Witness! Why did you run away yesterday? Shut up! The witness was not running away, as he will now testify. I, I see. Very well. Please begin your testimony. Um, I'm... How, what, how, how did I do this voice again? I'm really sorry about just leaving yesterday like I did. But I wasn't running away or nothing. I uh, went to buy some food for Polly, see? I figured I got nothing to do with this incident anyhow. Uh, I mean, uh, I need one of those motive things, right? And I don't got one. So my testimony yesterday stands as is. Very well. Let's begin the cross-examination, shall we? He has to know his name. Yaniyogi. You're Yaniyogi, and I'm going to prove it. Hee-ha. <sighs> Wasn't running away. Bye for Polly. How can you say you had no motive? I say you do. You had a grudge against Edgeworth and the victim, Robert Hanneman. That's why you took revenge on them, right? Please don't make me repeat myself, Mr. Wright. This witness has no memory of anything beyond several years ago. He can't hold a grudge. It's impossible. I have to prove he's lying about his memory. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing over and over until the trial ends. First things first. I have to prove this man is who he is. Do that, and the motive will prove itself. Hmm. Food? Well, Polly is a bit of a gourmet, you see. He only eats his high-quality bird pellets from France. We only give them in, only have them in the big pet shop downtown. But you weren't arrested until this morning. Why didn't you go back to the caretaker shack? Uh, well, I kind of got lost, you see. The witness has trouble remembering things sometimes. When the police apprehended him, he was on his way back to the shack. Yeah, right. Nice try from Karma. No one's going to believe that. Hmm, I see. So he was lost. Please, your honor, come to your senses. Hmm. you did running away and not just leaving. You heard Larry's testimony and realized you were in danger. Shut it up! Now, Mr. Wright, there's no need to rush to conclusions. As I said, the witness was not running away. Listen to the testimony. Sure seems relaxed. 
In fact, they both do. Phone Karma and Yanni Yogi. Now why did you leave? Oh my god. She's just about to say why. Is it so hard for you to just quietly listen when someone's talking? I sat quietly. Edgeworth would be guilty in three minutes. should save. Hmm. If Phoenix is quiet, Karma can go pee whenever he needs. somewhere else. Oops. Okay, cool. Whatever. Oh no, we found- Guilty. Whatever. Court's adjourned. <laughs> no, it's not. God. Motive, motive. What is a motive? I'm like, did I try DL6 on this one or was it the other one? Objection. Apparently, it doesn't matter. Motive. I didn't mean to do that. How can you say you had no motive? I see you too. You had a grudge against I think okay. Revenge. How can we prove he is Yanni Yogi? Poly on the poly line? But how does that contradict anything? I'm looking for contradictions, not... No, I know for certain there, it's like one of the last two ones. He has something to do with this case, he has a motive. But... I didn't 
I know I I don't want to look up a guide. But if others do and tell me, then I'm fine with it. I just don't want to do it myself. <laughs> is DL6. Back. To prove this man is who he is. To do that and the motive will prove itself. But to do that, I need to bring up DL6. But Oh, okay, hold on. Let me go. Let me go through all of this. Okay, that's the autopsy report. It's not that. It's not this either. Press on the fourth and fifth statement. I think I already did that one, two, three, four. You've lost much of your memory. Is that correct? Did I not fucking press that? Are you kidding me? Uh, yep. Seems like it. And how could you know that you didn't have anything to do with this incident? Uh... Or... Or maybe you're lying about not having your memory, hmm? You know exactly who you are. Shut it up. The witness has testified quite clearly that he has no memory of who he is. If you claim he's lying, then show the court proof. Mm, how am I supposed to prove what's going on in that old codger's head? It's impossible. Huh. I'm glad you've come to your senses, Mr. Wright. Very well, witness. Please continue. Might I say something, Mr. Wright? Yes. Yes, Your Honor? You've been saying the same thing now, over and over. You've been calling the witness's memory of the past, or lack thereof, into question. Thank you so much. For, for the help. But does this really have anything to do with the current case? Of course, Your Honor. The witness has said he has nothing to do with this case and no motive. Both of these statements are lies. Order! Order! Mr. Wright, there is a serious problem with your claim. Or are you saying? Are you saying you know who this witness is? Of course, Your Honor. <laughs> now this is interesting. I would like to know myself. So, who is he? Don't play dumb, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, please tell us this witness is Yeet. Ne which is ne Yeet. <laughs> His name is Yanni Yogi, a former court bailiff. Yogi? That name seems familiar. Oh! Yanni Yogi from the DL6 incident. I figures the judge would have heard of it. It was such a famous case. But what does this mean? Your Honor, if this man is Mr. Yogi, then he has a clear motive. Shut up! I'm jumping to conclusions again, Mr. Wright. This man, this witness, is Yanni Yogi. Fascinating. However, how do you propose to prove this to the court? This is a court of law. As you may recall, you need proof. And allow me to repeat once more that the witness has lost his memory. This is it. I have to do this now. If I can't prove his yogi right here, right now, then I've got nowhere else to go. Nick, 
How are we going to prove it? How can you prove that he's Yanni Yogi? It's okay. It's actually quite simple. I hate the... I hate the entire man. Your Honor. Please take this man's fingerprints. Then we'll compare them to the fingerprints on file for Yanni Yogi 15 years ago. Von Karma is annoying. He's a little baby ass bitch. No one likes him. <laughs> I see. That makes sense. Huh? I'm so very sorry, Mr. Wright. Why? The witness has no fingerprints. What? What? No fingerprints? Uh, you see, before I worked as a caretaker, I worked at a chemical plant. I burned my fingers working with this stuff. Are you? Pineapple farm? What? Yogi, you sneak. Burned your fingerprints off to hide your past. Hmm. Well, if the witness has no fingerprints, I guess we will not be able to prove his identity. No. Pineapples take away your fingerprints? Really? Interesting. Well, what will you do, Mr. Wright? Uh... Hmm... It seems the case has been decided, no? They, they eat you as much as we eat them. Wait, how how does it take away? Like, is it by... By eating them? Or is it by touching them? No! I know what happened. I know everything. I, I just can't prove it. No, I can't let it end like this. I can't lose. There has to be another way. There is no one who can testify as to who this witness is. No one. Nick, what are we going to do? I didn't even consider that he might have had, have erased his fingerprints. What do I do? Well, Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to cross-examine his parrot for a little comic relief, hmm? Yeah, yeah, very funny. You're a sore winner, Mr. F Von Karma. The enzyme breaks down the cells of the fingers, finger by touch. It takes a while, but eventually there is no more fingerprint. Interesting. Wait a second. Cross-examine his parrot? Oh, like the fucking greatest part of the entire thing, yes. What is it, Nick? No, you're not going to... Your Honor. The defense would like to take Mr. Von Karma up on his proposal. Take Mr. Von Karma up? On my proposal? Exactly, Your Honor. I would like to cross-examine the witness's pet parrot. <laughs> I mean, to be fair... Uh... Later on, we're gonna be cross-examining another animal, so <laughs> anything can happen in this universe, apparently. Order! Order! Oh well, what do you think, Mr. Von Karma? You need to even ask. This is a false. I object. Wait a second. You were the one who suggested I cross-examine the parrot, Mr. Von Karma. Have a right to do as you suggested. Mm. Well, if you're so desperate, then please be my guest. Of course, should you go through with this and nothing comes of it, then I hope you're ready for the consequences. Nick, this is crazy. Well, I still want to go through with your little game. Yes, I'm doing it. <laughs> Give me the parrot! Let the parrot take the stand! Yes! I will cross-examine her, Your Honor. So where someone is gonna have a pet rock that they will cross-examine. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. On Karma's rigged every person's testimony, every piece of evidence, except the parrot. She's my last chance. At least, I think so. Bailiff, bring in the parrot. 
Here we go. That's quite a bird. Please tell us your name. Name. The witness is ignoring me. It must hurt to be ignored by a bird. Ahem. Very well, witness. Who is your owner? Please uh, testify for us. Hello. Hello. Hmm. Certainly the most concise testimony we've had so far. Very well. Begin your cross-examination. You going to do Nick? I I don't know. What do we do, Maya? Hmm. Oh, judge. Hello, hello, squawk. <laughs> the <laughs> two parents. <laughs> Witness, you can't just say hello and expect us to get anywhere. I want you to testify. Maya, you talk to her. Right, uh, what do I say? Uh, what's your name? Sure, let's over that. Maybe I should get her to say her name. Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly, Polly! Mr. Wright, I think we've established that this parrot is named Polly. Does this have anything to do with her owner's identity? No, it doesn't. Uh, well, I guess it doesn't really have anything to do with that, no. Please only ask questions pertaining to the matter at hand. Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. Uh, I mean, I guess it's have we forgotten something, right? So I recall two days ago. Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Don't forget the L6. If I can get Polly to say that here, I will prove that the caretaker had something to do with the L6. Um, Polly, have we forgotten something? Hello, hello. I don't think you can unlearn something in a day. <laughs> like... I don't think parrots can unlearn some things like that in a day. I don't even think parrots work like that. Unless Mr. Yanni Yogi goes around saying, don't forget DL6, don't forget DL6, don't forget DL6, don't forget DL6, don't forget DL6 all the time. <laughs> Once they know, they know, yeah. But like you have to like repeat it for a long time before they can like actually start to um, to repeat what you say like that. At least I, I, I believe so. <laughs> Not that I, I have any first hand experience with the parrot. <laughs> That's not what you're supposed to say. Forgot something we forgot. Hello. Hello. It's almost like he just went in and just like uh, reprogrammed <laughs> his parrot just like oh, we put this thing over here instead uh oh it's not working Nick she won't say it this is ridiculous why won't she say it something the matter Mr. Wright wait don't tell me Von Karma expected this what did he put the poor parrot through couldn't have retrain, retrained the parrot, could he? Did he train her not to respond when we when we asked if we'd forgotten anything? You can't do that in the day, please, like, so please turn your parrot off and on again. <laughs> okay, let me try the other one. It's a safe number. You gotta get her to say the safe number of the safe. Huh? The safe? Why? Let's just try to get her to say anything, okay? Polly, what was the number to the safe in the shack? One, two, two, eight. One, two, two, eight. My, what a reckless parrot. 
I just realized the judge and the parents sound eerily similar. <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, you aren't claiming that this number has something to do with the caretaker. <gasps> oh, wait, it does! I remember, it does! If we go here. One, two, two, eight. 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 Actually, it does. That's why I had her say it. Yes! Ha, huh, ridiculous. How can the number to a safe tell us who the caretaker is? Show us your proof. What could possibly link this number to the caretaker's true identity? One, two, two, eight. <laughs> the DL6 case file. What is this perception you have with that case? Mr. Wright. Where in this file is something relating to that safe number? Uh, case summary. It's on the case summary page. Case summary. Specifically, the date on which the DL6 incident occurred. The date of the incident, December 28th. Why, that's today's date, 15 years ago. And the number on that safe is 1228. Ah! He used the date of the DL6 incident as the number for his safe, Your Honor. That's how important that date was to him. I see. It certainly is an interesting coincidence. People often do set their secret numbers set their secret numbers to date. Ah, this is not tangible proof. I set my ATM card's number to 001 because 0001. Yet I can count because I'm number 1. <laughs> this has nothing to do with the date. Nothing. Huh. Indeed, alone it is a little weak for evidence in a murder trial. You would need some other corroborating evidence. Where are we going to find that? Hey, we're getting closer. One more. We can just get one more piece of evidence. I know, and I, I do not have the voice box to be able to <laughs> replicate it. Objection! <laughs> I can't speak like that. If I do that... I would have lost my voice by now. Let's just put it like that. <laughs> one more, if we can just get one more piece of evidence. Right, but what? Hmm. Very well, witness. You may continue. <laughs> wow. Is there anything else? his arrest fiance Polly Jenkins your voice ran fits in better though you're flattering me <laughs> name of course yes, it does I think you're taking the bluffing a little too far. Sorry, I skipped too fast. Listen, we're not here to answer the question of who is the caretaker. We're here to prove that he is Yanni Yogi. All we have to do is tie the name Polly to Yogi. Your Honor, the proof that the parrot's name reveals the caretaker's identity is... The DL6 case file. Quite a large file you have there. Which page is this proof on then? Show us. Stop wasting our time. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please show us the page. Where in this file is the information connected to this parrot's name? Suspect data. It's on the suspect data page. This page has all the information about Yanni Oki. Right after he was arrested, his fiance committed suicide. See? Hmm. Indeed. It does say that, yes. What was his fiance's name? Polly Jenkins. Polly! Exactly, Your Honor. He wanted to remember the name of his fiance, who had committed suicide. That's why he named his parrot after her. I see. I guess that is possible. Shut it up! A mere coincidence, that's all. My granddaughter has a dog she calls Phoenix. 
Well, Mr. Felix Wright, does this make you my granddaughter's fiance? She's only seven years old! That's enough! I think we've reached a conclusion here. This is a mere coincidence, that's all. True, that is a possibility. However, two coincidences at the same time seems more like a pattern to me. Plus, Edgy has already married him. Well, not quite yet. <laughs> What are you saying? Summon the caretaker of the boat shop. Immediately. Witness, tell us your name. Wait, this witness, he doesn't remember. Oh, it's okay. I have accomplished what I wanted to do. I'm done. Nick, he looks totally different. This is the real Yogi, I think. Sorry, that just morphed from, from Maya to Phoenix. <laughs> this is the real Yogi, I think. Finally. He's been acting feeble to hide his true identity. Acting for 15 years. Well. Let me ask you again. Please state your name for the court. My name is Yanni Yogi. Fifteen years ago, I served as a bailiff in this very court. Order! Order! Yanni Yogi! So, was it you who killed Robert Hammond? And tried to frame Miles Edgeworth for his death? Yes, it was me. I did it. They put me on the witness stand fifteen years ago. Robert Hammond, he said I was mentally unsound. He told me it would make me innocent, get me off the hook. So, I pretended to have brain damage. I was innocent, really, but he didn't believe me. He won the trial, but I lost everything. I lost my job, my fiancé, my social standing. Then, this year, 15 years later, a package arrived. It was a letter and a pistol. The plan was written out in careful detail. It was a plan for me to take my revenge on the people who ruined my life. I didn't care who had sent it. I thought this was my chance. After 15 years, this was it. Finally, a chance to have my revenge on Robert Hammond and Miles Edgeworth. He was nine at the time, the whole through. I have no regrets. Oh, wait a moment. Revenge against Miles Edgeworth? What do you mean? I'm not at liberty to speak on that matter. Why don't you ask Mr. Edgeworth yourself? Anyway, I admit it. I was the one who killed Robert Hammond. <laughs> Fun Karma, where is Mr. Yogi? Under arrest, Your Honor. I saw no room for error in his confession. Then, the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, is innocent. In this case, at least. Hmm. Huh. Very well. Will the defendant please take the stand? There are a few mysteries left unsolved. Still, you are cleared of suspicion for this particular case. So I would like to pass judgment on the murder of Mr. Robert Hammond. Any objections? I don't believe it. Why isn't Von Karma saying anything? Very well. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Yeehaw. That is all. This court is adjourned. <sighs> Did someone just say objection? That was Edgeworth. I can recognize that objection. Anywhere. It wasn't fun karma. Wait, but that means... No. Edgeworth? Your Honor, I object to your judgment. What do you mean? I'm not innocent at all. As we have heard, Yanniyogi killed Robert Hammond in revenge. But revenge for what? Nick! Edgeworth is trying to confess. He's going to say he's guilty. He's going to tell them he was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He's going to tell them he killed his own dad.
Uh oh, what do I do? The judgment has already been passed. I object to Edward's outburst. Didn't something like this happen yesterday too? I believe a certain witness raised an objection after a guilty verdict was passed. That would be Larry. We must hear this new statement. We must hear Miles Edgeworth. He is right. We have a duty to hear Mr. Edgeworth out. <sighs> Fifteen years. I've had a recurring dream. A nightmare. It's only a nightmare. That's what I told myself. But now I know. It wasn't a dream. Yanni Yogi wasn't the killer. You mean in the incident where your father died? From the distance of the shots, it wasn't suicide either. Everything was as clear as day. The murderer, the criminal in the DL6 incident. It was me, Your Honor. I confess my guilt. I am guilty for DL6, the statute of limitations of which ends today. The culprit is me. <laughs> Points towards... Exactly who are we pointing toward? <laughs> No, Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix. <laughs> the culprit is me. <laughs> A mirror, maybe? <laughs> no, that was literally towards Phoenix. Order! Order! This is certainly unexpected. The defendant declared innocent is confessing to a different crime. A crime for which the statute of limitations runs out today. I'm not really sure how I should deal with this. Huh. <laughs> it's obvious. We should hold it. We hold a trial. Right here. Right now. We try this man for his crime of 15 years ago. I think... I think I would like to take a five minute recess. During this time, I will consider the appropriate course of action to take. Court is adjourned. He was nine. Apparently that doesn't fucking matter in... Japanifornia. I'm sorry, Wright. I just wasted all of your effort. Mr. Edgeworth, I just don't believe it, sir. You mean you kill your dad? I didn't want to believe it myself, detective. But it's the truth. I deserve to be punished. Murder is murder, no matter what the circumstances of the damage. <laughs> no matter what the circumstances. This is crazy, just crazy. What are you doing? Huh? Oh, I was just reading through the court record once more. I'm getting my case ready. Your case? For what? Huh? Isn't it obvious? I'm going to prove that Miles Edgeworth is innocent. What are you talking about, pal? He just admitted to it. He confessed that he did it. In court. I'm sorry, Edgeworth, but I don't believe your nightmare. What? It's just a dream. It's not real. The truth is right here in this court record. In any case, tighten your belts. The real fight is just beginning. I'll prove your innocence. Trust me. Right. His face. I'm sorry. Now then, I would like to resume our trial. Judge. Miles Edgeworth has admitted his own guilt. He has confessed his crime. Let us begin by hearing his testimony. Then, though pointless, let the defense do their cross-examining. The statute of limitations on the DL6 incident runs out today. Though it's unconventional for me, I'd like to run this one by the book. I see. Does the defense have any objections? No, Your Honor. Von Karma. You knew this was going to happen from the very begin beginning, didn't you? Very well. I believe I am. I don't know how long I have left, actually, but I believe it's like... This is this is the last stretch, anyways. Will Miles Edgeworth take the stand? Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, I'm a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 
15 years ago, you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify about this matter to the court. When Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday, I noticed something. One detail didn't quite fit. That will be the key, but only if I can get it to work. Please, please. Oh, that day, I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in the elevator. My father and Mr. Yogi lost their composure and began to argue. Just then, something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted them to stop fighting. A moment later, there was a single gunshot. Then a scream. It was a terrible scream, and I remember it to this day. So. Huh. And until now, you thought this memory was a dream. He was stuck in that elevator for five hours. The oxygen in the elevator ran out, and I lost my memory of the events. <laughs> Same claim Mr. Yogi has made. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Ho, 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 ho. So there were three people, including yourself, trapped in that elevator. Yes, myself, my father, oh. Myself, my father, and Yanni Yogi. We were fine at first, but then as time passed and no one came to help, we started arguing. What did you do then? I was a nine-year-old boy at the time. What could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. But then... What was it? A pistol. I assume it was the bailiff Yaniogis. The safety must have come off when I when it fell from his holster. And you picked it up. What happened next? Picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. Blah, 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 blah. Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it was dangerous, but the air was getting so thick I panicked. So, you're saying that you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? It was in the days. The gun fired once. Wait, um. The murder weapon was fired twice. That's right. That's not how the safety works! Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I guess my face cam kind of covers up this part, but I don't know if it's like that big of a deal. I don't know. Have the developers ever even seen a gun before this? I don't know. They they live in Japan, so maybe not, because as far as I'm aware, uh, guns aren't allowed there. Something. Got my hair, it's just a mess. Look at this. <laughs> what are you doing? Hello, little friend. Please get behind my ear or whatever. Okay. <clears throat> the gun fired once. Yes. I think after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, it echoed in my head every day. That gunshot and that horrible scream. Scream. Objection. Yes! Are you sure you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard the shot and then the scream. Then everything faded. It was unconscious until the rescuers came. You said you were unconscious until you woke up in the hospital. <laughs> I see. No, Your Honor. Unfortunately, you don't. Look at the f look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. Shut up! You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? 
Well, if it has evidence, then yeah! But isn't that the point? I don't accept this evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles Edgeworth's testimony? Victim data? Look at the victim data in this file. It says it quite plainly. The murder weapon was fired twice. Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yet, the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was the accidental firing when the pistol was thrown. So, who fired the remaining shot? Hmm. Was there perhaps another shooter who fired that second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago that evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when that second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof that the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? Mm, I see, I see. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we have heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired had something to do with the case? Uh, well, I mean, yes. I do. Your Honor, I think you will- I will- I think I will be able to show you proof. What? Impossible. Now, now, Mr. Von Karma. Save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. The picture with the bullet hole in the window. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. Very well, Mr. Wright, show us your proof. Look at this photograph. <laughs> this is a photograph of the, cr of the crime, of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying here, lying there, is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. So let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired. Where? Your Honor, please get a clue. As should be obvious, the contradiction is here. I see a bullet hole in the door. Your Honor, Gregory Edgeworth was killed by a shot from the pistol. Yet there is also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We also know that the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. Order! Order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other hit the elevator door. Remember that the defendant lost consciousness after the shot he fired rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright, but who could that someone else be? The murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 incident case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary, that's on page one. Look what is written there. Not a single clue was found on the scene. If the pistol had indeed been fired two times, then the other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He does have a point. That second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was the one fired by his own son. That is the truth of this matter. Matter. The whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that made that bullet fall in the door. Order! I will have order! Mr. Wright has proven one thing to us quite clearly. 
that the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. However, as Mr. Von Karma says, the second bullet fired was not found. It is highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. So all we have is the single bullet fired. I am afraid I have to discount the defense's claim. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Ugh, this happened. I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you doing, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? I, it, it looks like I was wrong. Nick? If the second bullet wasn't there, then all my conjectures are for nothing. No. But you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Edgeworth declared innocent. I'm sorry. It's just, when I saw the photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone else who fired the killing shot. But no, I was wrong to think it could be that simple. This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick. Well, it seems that we have finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my verdict. Have you been play pay playing, paying attention to the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So you killed your father, though that was not your intention? Yes, I did. Oh no. He's accepted the, he's accepted the guilt. Very well. The statute of limitations on the murder of Gregory Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, we must pronounce a verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now. Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There's so many things I know I should be saying. But my mind's gone blank. I can't find the words. Mr. Wright. I have an objection. objection. Your Honor. I... I object! Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object, hmm? Oof. Nick! I don't know, his case is perfect! Oh no... Ah. It must exist. The second bullet. What? What you just say? N nothing! The second bullet must exist. But where? Someone took it. It seems waiting is not going to produce us any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor! Huh? I, uh... The, the second bullet. It, uh, it existed. What? But we've just heard proof that it did not exist. I realize that, Your Honor. I'm really grasping here. It's just someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The, the murderer! The murderer? Then tell us, just who is this murderer? I'm uh, still thinking about that one. Hmm. So the criminal took the second bullet. But why? Huh? First of all, how would they have found it? It's not easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to search for the bullet? Well, the murderer didn't need it. Why would the murderer have spent the time to look for that stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Um... Huh. The murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Uh. Had to take it. Had to take it? The murderer? What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy. Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. 
Mr. Wright. Y yes, Your Honor. No idea what I'm doing. Uh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But, uh, the murderer had to take that bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance, what? Um, maybe the bullet, uh, hit the murderer? The bullet hit the murderer? Just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there. Y you know? Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's really what happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer themselves was shot. And they left the second bullet still in with the second bullet still inside of them. Thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime. Uh, yes. I guess that's how it would work, yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from that elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanni Yogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean... The murderer came from outside, yes. Two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges and the bullet... The bullet goes through the elevator door and hits the murderer outside. There was only one bullet hole? No, 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 no. Uh, so the one that, um... In the glass. Yes! That is true. He just lined it up with the hole and just shot through it. <laughs> the boy loses consciousness. Then the murderer opens the elevator door and sees the men inside. Huh. Mr. Wright. You are truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've ever known. I can tell you're grasping, yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. Shut up. What are you saying? Deny it! Deny it! No one can- no one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Huh. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. Right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? I just thought of something really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. It must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. It's an unusual event for the man. That was the first and the last vacation he's taken in his many years of prosecuting. What if Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of shock? But took it because he was injured. Which would mean... It could only mean one thing. He was the murderer in the DL6 incident. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was... Von Karma. Oh man. Something wrong, Mr. Wright. You seem... Dazed. Uh, uh no, Your Honor. Well... You have indicated the possibility that the murder came from murderer came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh oh, should I come out and say it now? I must save. <laughs> I must save it. Wait, I don't have enough proof yet. This is my trump card. I'd better save it for the right time. Mr. Wright, something in the matter. I'm fine, Your Honor. Shall we carry on with the trial then? Hmm. That said, we have no farther to go. All that is left is the finish. In other words, the verdict. What? Not yet! Think, Mr. Bright. You have said that someone from the outside was a murderer. Yet you cannot suggest anyone as a possible suspect. Which means your conjecture is worthless. And will be rejected, of course. Nick! 
Now's no time to be holding on to that trump card. Okay. The trial's almost over. All right. I may not know what I'm doing, but here goes. Your Honor, there is a suspect. One lone suspect. Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? F -f -f uh -huh. My hands are shaking. F -f what? Von Karma. Von Karma. You mean the Von Karma? The prosecutor, the one standing right over there? Huh. You don't object. Hmm. Huh. I see no need to I honor this ridiculous outburst with my objection. Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after the incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident. Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Uh. Nick, let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Edgeworth? I know Von Karma. Perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave a doctor as a witness. But is that perfect? So, so what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out by himself? That's insane. No, we couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere. But where? Well, Mr. Wright. Can you produce evidence to provide prove that I was shot? I'm saving again. <laughs> Alright, Fun Karma, I'll prove it. And I'll even use evidence. I know how you like it so much. What? The evidence that proves Fun Karma was shot is Ah, shut up. Von Karma is perfect. You wouldn't risk surgery leaving an evidence trail. Metal detector, yes! So then, I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it unlikely that Von Karma per performed surgery on himself. You, you don't mean... I do. There is the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. even possible for all these years well there is one way to find out why do like all of them fucking turn more British as they go on <laughs> we could use this metal detector well Von Karma I'm going to run this over you and see what we find oh no look at him he's so scared I think I think he may have peed himself right now I refuse. You refuse? But refusing this means... You acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you? Order! 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 Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. Statute of Limitations runs out on this case today. It was you who said we had to end it right here, right now. <laughs> Enough! I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know. But we have to give it a shot. Reacted. Something's inside his right shoulder. The bullet. Mr. Von Karma. You. It was you. 
I was afraid this would happen. So I remained silent. Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. But, Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove? I have no obligation to prove anything. This is Mr. Wright who must prove something here. Not I. M Mr. Wright! Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Mr. In Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any of the DL6 evidence. That's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. Absolute bastard, absolute. For sure. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No. I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. What? You were close. One day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof. What? Who would have thought you would dig your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. Uh, that's... A bullet. Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets. Then, if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets had been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol. In other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma? You will let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma. I'm not gonna scream. It's fucking what I am. That scream. I've heard that scream before. Wait, I know. Yangi, who is who Yangi? I can't breathe. Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. So I'm breathing my air. Stop, 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 stop breathing my air. Get away. Get away from my father. That scream I heard in the elevator 15 years ago. Von Karma, it was you who screamed! Mr. Von Karma! Edgeworth! Only you would dare defy me! So it was you. You and your father are my curse. Your father shamed me with the penalty of my record. And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade. I'll bury you. I'll bury you with my bare hands. Death. Death. He's so angry. Fifteen years earlier. Chief Prosecutor, I'm sorry. Von Karma, it's not like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. I was careless. 
I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. Edgeworth. It was a shock like none I'd ever known. Me? Penalized. It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly, I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went into the hall and felt my way to, to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. I was in pain. A horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then, the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside, all lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then, it was destiny. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium, blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge! What? What are you doing? Do your job. Bring an end to this miserable charade. Charade. Now, end it. Uh, uh, very well. It appears that we have come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later. Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty! Yes! Yes! That is all. This court is injured. Yes! Ah! Hmm. Nick! Nick, we did it! Did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him. Nick, crushed! I gotta say, I'm impressed! <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure we'd had it. I know, I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now, it's all just a good memory. Finally over, Edgeworth. Right. Yeah? I, I'm not sure how to say this. I know, I know! Try thank you. I, s I see. Thank you, right. I you're welcome. I think you could have done better than that. Hmm. Sorry, I'm not good at this sort of thing. Got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. She's got you there. Whoa! Amazing, pal. You pulled through just like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. Tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. But who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth? You should take a lesson from De Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Um, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the it's the serious face that really does it for me, really. Uh, I can't even I can't even imagine how he would say that. So I unfortunately I don't know how to replicate it. So I'm just gonna leave this to your imagination because I think it's better that way, honestly. I I feel foolish. I cannot. Don't worry. Take it a little at a time. We'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Hey, y'all. Luda! Yo, we're great in there. Thank you. Yo, Edgeworth, congrats. Uh, thank you all very much! <laughs> <laughs> I 
Thank you all very much. <laughs> oh no. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. Let us shut up. Just look at you. You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar. Even if no one was there. You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, let bygones be bygones, huh? Speaking of which, what, what are you doing now, Lotta? Who, me? Oh, I went back to college. I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? It's over, Nick. My life is over. God, Keonse already broke up with him. Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick, I'm not long for this world. Uh, you don't look sick. It's Keonse. She She's going to live in Paris. Paris, Nick. Why do your girlfriends go to Paris for some reason? <laughs> she's leaving me behind. Should have seen that coming. Yo, Edgy, there you are. Um, yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here, a little gift from me in celebration. Celebration? It's unusual for you. Harry Butts, you came along tonight too. You come along tonight too. My treat, pal. Huh? Uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, you Nick. That's a suit that questioned me. When he said treat, it's not police talk of prison, right? Prison food, right? Right? Uh, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right. Yeah? What's up? Envelope that Larry gave me. It's got money in it. Well, yeah, that's not that strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's 38 dollars, right? Huh? What a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. $38 exactly? Nick! Wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? $38. No. No, Larry, was you? What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a, as a suspect. What? Think back to that day, 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came into school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. He never was good at history, huh? Edgeworth. You didn't know, did you? I suspected. Couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying he did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the bus. I know, I know. See, it's like things like these. They're like, no, but I can't make him British. <laughs> I don't know. He's like somewhere in between, but I don't know how to make that in between. <laughs> really? <laughs> because like he drinks tea, so like you would. It's just I don't know. He just seems British. <laughs> we can pretend he went to London to finish school. He didn't go to London, though. <laughs> he looks British enough. Okay, cool. Let's go with that, I guess. Well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, huh? Edgeworth. Hmm? Should have told me. Now, now, Nick. It was 15 years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? Say so, yes. There you have it. <sighs> Where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. Well, you have always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. Yeah, and you get worked up too easily, too. The death, the death sentence for both of you. Man, if I had only known, if only I had known, I'd have become a prosecutor. Same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I 
thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I had known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth. I want to switch rights. Hey, y'all. Line up. I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time. Let's go. And after that, dinner's on me. With what money? <laughs> Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. I like how you're saying if you two get married as if they're not already married. Well, they're not already married. They do. You know, whatever. <laughs> also, um, a fun a uh, little thing that I uh, I heard about. Apparently, uh, what was the thing? It was like after the first game, um, the develop uh, the developers they kind of wanted to like God was it like they took some inspiration from BL. I'm not kidding. <laughs> And then, like, the project leader, I guess, was, like, against it. But then someone were like, no, 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 we're gonna do it anyways. <laughs> so literally, certain parts of Ace Attorney have taken inspiration from Bia. <laughs> Which I find really funny. They got told no because they wanted to do it, and then, then they got told no. I was like, man, fuck it, we'll do it anyway. <laughs> it's so funny. Even though Edgeworth himself was still in touch, yeah, okay. <sighs> Whoa, I went a little overboard yesterday. This is a great idea, you cannot stop us. <laughs> My head hurts. Huh? It's still only five. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Hmm? What's this? A letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium. In training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you, but I couldn't. It was useless. So I've decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. G goodbye? What time is it? Oh, the first trains for the mountains have already left. To the station! I guess I'm too late. Hey! Nick! Maya! So... So you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And... I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Wait! What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? Objection! Yeah. On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yes, only her voice, but still. It was at the very end, and I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. You were the one who stopped from karma, Maya. Huh? I, I didn't do anything! All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. E evidence? Take that! A bullet? From karma was convinced. He had taken all of the evidence pertaining to DL6. 
But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. Is Phoenix really allowed to keep all the evidence? Shh! Don't, don't question it. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back. Okay, I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless. Uh, I don't know about that. So, this is it. See you soon, Maya. Goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins with the same old crazy cast of characters. Ha! Huh. Don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you would like to rethink that claim. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh oh, I got a bad feeling about this. That's it, that's the first game. Hey pal, Mr. Edgeworth came down to the precinct to wish me a happy new year. Talk about a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Detective cover shirt. Then he hung his head low and went right back outside. <laughs> kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? Serious face is amazing. I know, right? Huh? Nick? Now I haven't seen him lately. Who, me? I've been working at a cheese shop. That Missy is a nice lady. But she's not exactly what you call a cheap date. Huh? Oh, she's in Hawaii right now. Yeah. Who? Oh, right? Yeah, I remember him. I hear he's been busy lately. You know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. Objection! Objection! He has like a really fucking annoying tone. Oh, the bell boy. Phoenix, right? Hmm. Oh, the defense attorney for whom I wrote that affidavit. David, yes. Oh, you should know. I've taken management over the Gatewater Hotel. You should you be in the area. Please stop by. Ahem. Oh, it's you. Phoenix Wright? Oh, yes. Mia's understudy, was he not? I wonder how he's doing. I haven't seen him of late. Oh, the days of my youth are like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Are we gonna see April May? Phoenix Wright? Is he an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star with a name like Phoenix. Did you know that they're finally putting some... <laughs> I fucking do it. And don't question it, okay? I just enjoy it for what it is. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pleased to announce the Pink Princess is a hit. I sure owe that Mr. Wright a great deal. <laughs> oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public eye until the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kids' dreams, you know. Hugh Jackman. <laughs> from Maya the other day. It sounds like she caught a cold standing under a waterfall. I wanted to visit, but didn't have time, so I sent her some Pink Princess trading cards. She says she can't buy them where she is. What kind of place is she living at anyway? <sighs> 
right? Who's that? You wanna talk? Let's talk Pink Princess, alright? But, you know, I snuck into the studio the other day And I saw her, the one inside the Pink Princess suit Ugh, what a dog, it was kind of a shock for a boy of my tender age The mountain lady? Literal mountain, oh yeah, yeah, yeah yeah, I remember right, that lawyer guy. Huh, me? I'm in training to become a paranormal photographer. You know, that picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's a ghost. For real? Now that's talent. I'm gonna be famous. Oh, that's so cute. Wait. <laughs> Ayo, Edgeworth! Edgeworth, my boy! Oh, did I say that was the end of the first game? Sorry, I lied, there is another episode. And it's a rather long one, too. It's a good one, though, so I guess I'll do that next time. I mean, technically, uh... Hold on, let me, let me fucking go and look at that picture because, uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see you. Definitely, Nick. Oh, yeah, for sure. Huh, <sighs> okay. My god. My throat is kind of tired now. I mean, it's fine. But, like, I can, I can, I can feel that it's, um... Not doing the best right now. Hold on, wait, let me... Yeah, save. Seven hours is a long time, yeah. It is. I've had longer streams before, though. So, uh, this is not really something new to me. <laughs> but, yeah, I've had streams. Like, at least two up to ten hours, I believe. Oh, which, uh... I'm gonna be honest, I'm not looking too forward to for the... Second and third games in this series. Aristocats? Yes. <laughs> I got it at h and It was so cute. I was like, yes. Cats and like pastel purple? Yes. I love it. Huh. <sighs> but yeah. Oh my god. I am so excited to continue. I'm here, like, so excited to start the second game, the third game, the investigations game. Games, actually. Apollo Justice. And then move on to the 3DS games, which I, I will have to get, uh, like, a 3DS capture card for. I will fucking send my 3DS to Germany just to be able to play <laughs> those games on stream. <laughs> because I looked at... I looked at like uh, playing them on an emulator and apparently they're not the best. So yeah, it will totally be worth it. Uh, this case was definitely better than last time. I feel like, I don't know, I just enjoy this case a lot more, I guess. And also I didn't get stuck. 
Like, there was, like, one time I got, like, stuck, stuck, where I was, like, I don't know what to do, but it was just because I was stupid. Um, but, yeah, I'm not gonna, like, hold on, wait, I'm not gonna ramble on for way too long. <clears throat> Ooh. It's been fun, though, so I guess, uh, yeah, tomorrow I'm gonna be playing... Moral Kamiden on the other channel on the Lazy Little Garamo, you can see it like up there. <laughs> huh. Yes. And I want to finish this game this week, preferably. So maybe I'll play the last case of the first game. Though technically this was the last case. That's just like a bonus case. Um, on either Saturday or Sunday. And depending how long it takes, I believe it. it is actually rather long. But if it's like not too long... I can do the first case of the second game because that lasts for like 90 minutes as far as I'm aware. Anyways. I have, the, I have this like fucking spreadsheet that I found online of how long like each case takes. Yeah, it does take a while. Especially when you don't know what the hell you're doing, but I do know what I'm doing. At least I think I know what I'm doing. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I mean, technically, I can skip it, and I won't really miss out on much until I get to Apollo Justice, because... Yeah. Actually... Uh, it is a fun case. So, yeah. I'm just like, so excited to play this game. I will put myself through pain to be able to just play full episodes per stream. Like, how amazing isn't that? I just feel... You have to get up at six. Oh, oh my god, I feel so sorry for you. I mean, lately I've been like waking up at like eight and nine for some reason. So I'm like, you know what? I'm happy with it. Considering I usually can fucking sleep an entire day if I want to. <laughs> I don't think it's too shabby. Oh uh, yeah, I was I was saying something. I forget what though. <laughs> sleep is so nice. It is when you can sleep. Like there was, uh, before I started streaming Ace Attorney, I had this like epiphany one night at like fucking 4 a.m. And I was just like laying there awake. I was like, well fuck, now I have to go and make all of this. Well, not quite all of it, but quite a bit of it, you know. You know what would, like, elevate this to, like, a much higher level? Is if I got a green screen? And I could put myself in, like, the fucking witness stands or whatever? <laughs> or <laughs> that would be amazing. I could just be there, like, yeah. So here is my testimony, <laughs> you know? <laughs> or like behind the defense or attorney's desks or the judge, yes. That would be a lot of fun, but like I'm not there yet and I don't really have the money for that right now. Huh, anyways, that would be so much fun. <laughs> I 
I like how I'm so worried about like the end of the second game as if I'm anywhere near it. <laughs> Oh, I can also put myself in uh, detention. You know? It's like plop myself in there. It's like... <laughs> who will defend me? <laughs> um... Yeah. Like I said, I'm worried about the end of the second and third game. As if I'm anywhere near that. And I'm like, okay, I know the cases last at least nine hours. And I'm like, hmm, should I like... With or without the guard who lost his wife? Uh, definitely with. I'm like thinking about like, hmm, should I like dare to like sit there for like the entirety of that episode? Yeah, or split it in two. That's like been my thing. I'm like, should I just play it in full or split it in two? But I'm thinking about it now as if that has anything to say. <laughs> because I just have to like take that on the day, I guess. Just make sure that it's like in the weekend or something. Try to like time it nicely. On the one hand, I want to like just run through all the games, but at the same time, I'm gonna be like, no, I need to like hold back because I have to get my my uh, 3DS modded. <laughs> Health is important. It is. It is. Obviously, if I, like, feel tired or just start, like, getting annoyed, I will probably stop. But, like, if I, if I feel like I feel right now and I feel fine, I could probably, like, keep going. It's like, eh, seven hours. What's three more, you know? <laughs> but, yeah. With that... I'ma just... Kind of... You know... End it, I guess? You need a sleepy. I get it. I totally get it. So, yeah. With that. This is, uh... Farewell, I guess. Mm. So, yeah. Peace. You have a good night too, by the way. <laughs>